uh, let's start now. Is that cool. are you are you cool to start? I'm ready. I'm okay. good. I'm good. Not and you know, there's no bell or anything. It's just me talking <laughs> to you, man. Because I feel we we've never really met in person, have we? No, or not. We haven't talked. It's funnily like I. It, it, we're in a weird world where you um you kind of feel like you get to know people virtually and you know i mean you only know so much but no yeah it's like we're in that space where we're officially taken to the next level here yeah right seriously i feel i feel like we're just gaining a new friend right that's that's what this 100%. is this whole exactly. podcast um yeah like over the pandemic i befriended a lot of mutual friends of yours yeah and then when you become friends with somebody online you just sort of see them what they have to say every day and then you're just like well i know jim that's I funny. know him, but I've never been in a room. <laughs> well, it also is a part. This happens too when, um, I mean, I feel like when you're close to. Well, I get the sense that you're close to Michael. I'm close to Michael. So when you're but really buddies with this, you know, the same people in common, it almost kind of like it almost rubs off a little bit. Just because, like, you know what I mean? If Michael is such a good guy, and you know, if Michael tr trusts you, it's almost like instant credibility kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like he is the type of guy where i know if he vouches for somebody yes like he doesn't play if somebody no he's no bullshit with him like no, yeah no. he's not he's not a he's never phony like if if he really disagrees with something especially um anything to do with you know anything he's passionate about he doesn't like mince words and he tells you how he feels yeah oh you're an, you're an instant block <laughs> like like that i know if somebody's not blocked on on his uh on his facebook page they're probably at least somewhat of a good person <laughs> <laughs> but when when you get blocked by him, it's usually not. It's a, it's a specific. He's got a very specific. Uh, it's almost like I don't know if there are real rules, but I can almost probably predict who he would block. Though it's not like there's poor. <laughs> it's not like uh, you know Grand Theft Auto. You see people just randomly getting shot in the head. Yeah. It's not like oh that guy's just blocked because Michael just shot him in the head. No no no. Yeah. You, I can almost describe the comment they made. <laughs> and, and it's like it's usually they probably didn't use any kind of reason in their argument and it's probably non-science based and michael only has so much patience and tolerance you know <laughs> yeah no and well, but he like i don't you could, i don't know if you could trust my friends list you know what i mean the same way oh sure because i don't i don't i don't curate it very well <laughs> well that's you a know? scary thing to happen too especially if you kind of stay connected with folks that like you're you know they have really long ties where you may have kind yeah. of grown apart on stuff, but you know, he has different perspectives. Michael's of the kind of block perspective. If, and I get it. Like, I can't disagree with him. It's a different like, I'm philosophies. Much... Like you might, might want to keep problematic way. people so you can see what they're doing. You want to, you want to keep well, that's, tabs that's on a, them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's a smart way of looking at it. I actually go from a more, um, a weak, less courageous perspective where I just have this <laughs> desperate, I uh, desire for everybody to I don't have to have everybody like love me and love my films. I think my films is where I kind of go into the areas where I don't necessarily people need to love me. But in my real life, everyone, I really just I get uncomfortable when they don't like me, unless it's something that I'm really kind of specific in the sand on. And they're, you know, let's say, you know, they're racist and they don't like anti-racist. I'm fine with those situations. But if when someone like. I can't figure out why they don't. I don't know. I'm kind of insecure and pathetic like that, I guess. We all I have a you. little bit of yeah. But what you're saying, I like what you just said, though. You're saying that you can handle them not liking your films, though. Your work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I won't. Um, I won't cater any of that. I'm like really very dogmatic. I'm not a dogmatic person by nature, but I'm dogmatic to my I got to make the thing that I got to make independent of anyone to like it. No, I, I really like that. And that, that kind of brings me to the one reason I'm really happy to talk to you. Well, I'm excited because, to be here. Thanks. Yeah, buddy. yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to have you, man. Um, it's because, like, you, uh, two, I, three of your films I've seen at, more than once, and they're the nice. three that introduced me to you, which is... Oh, cool. The, the first one is Manicorn. Yes. The second one was... Uh, tiny clones yeah that right? makes sense i, I would have predicted that yeah yeah and um and darling pet monkey which is on awesome. your beautiful you. t-shirt right now yeah i can't um, help myself promote it all the time <laughs> yeah. no i love how you got you got uh the, i see the manicorn poster and i owe you yes there's all kinds yeah. of stuff yeah, yeah i basically like whole... the monkey ones back there uh i'm sorry behind uh the, the monitor here yeah it's um it you know john karen i don't know if you know him but have you ever seen the movie uh my name is jonah I have not, sadly. It's really, uh, it's a documentary that's really worth checking out. Uh, these guys, Phil Healy, uh, J.B. Sapienza, uh, Adam Van Van Horus, uh, John Karen, um, the four of them spent like seven years making this film. They met this guy named um, Jonah off MySpace, 
who was um it was kind of like tiger king before tiger king without um you know any kind of animals getting harmed or there's like much less kind of uh evil in it i guess you could say well i i, I thought tiger was insane but like uh but it's it's, it's a phenomenon they basically found this guy in myspace he's like a you know you think kind of like the characters of tiger king, but like they made this years ago and i kind of met uh, so Phil Healy, I met through Boston Underground. He was one of the. I'm familiar with guys. him. Uh, you know, he's, Phil, got, yeah. he's got kind of a name too, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. So he's um, he's made a lot of stuff, and he was one of the directors, producers, along with John J. B. and Adam, uh, for that film. It's a, it's, it's a phenomenal film. We're checking out. But John Karen um, was, you know, one of the producers of that. But he's also, you know, a cinematographer in his own right, and he's done all the post art for me. So, uh, oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So he did the Tiny Clones poster, the Monkey poster. I owe you one, but in as he did the new one about my dad that I uh, I got out kind of set off of submissions. And what I like about him is like what I love a lot about a lot of creative collaborators you work with in the best possible sense. They, you know, I, I let them just kind of run wild mm -hmm. and uh, they they give you something that you wouldn't have thought of. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. you know, especially if it's something fun and yet weird and unique, you can't get that if you push people too much into boxes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you that's my perspective. You know, you different ways of doing it. No, like, I agree. I, like, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I mean, I think you can, there's other ways of going about it where you're very specific with the folks and you want it specific to, that's okay too. I mean, just, you know, there's all a million different ways of doing it, but I kind of like to, you know, sometimes they surprise you, whether it's, you know, a co-writer or an artist or an actor, sometimes they surprise you in ways that maybe don't fit, doesn't fit. Um, but oftentimes you get something you never would have imagined if you just let them go wild. So, John, like this is a perfect example. I know you, the audience can't see it, but like it's on, it, it, for anyone that's uh, listening, you can actually see yeah. this on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. 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 So the poster itself is actually the screensaver for YouTube. And it's um, what I like kind of, you know, what I'm bragging about John here is, you know, he took the theme of the film and, you know, the monkey's really big in the poster. But <laughs> in real life, the monkey's small. But yeah, it, yeah. Because it causes such havoc and horror. It's this larger than it's like a, horror yeah, it's type like thing. a kaiju on the poster, right? Yeah. So yeah. John kind of ran with that theme, um, and which I loved. It was fun. So and it also was kind of surreal to see your kids um in <laughs> cartoon form and technically myself in cartoon monkey form, if I'm being specific. But they gotta love it, right? They probably love that poster. Oh uh, oh yeah, they love it. It's yeah. funny because um, you know, it's such a weird normal for them between you know, because they've been a part of this since they were literally born. And their friends usually get it, you know, I'm just knocking on wood because they're my old, youngest is almost 10. Now my oldest will be uh, 12 in February. And I'm just praying this doesn't become embarrassing. Because <laughs> we're at that place where their friends think it's cool. Yeah. And their yeah. friends, like, I get the sense that, you know, they think their friends got a cool dad. But, you know, listen. Are you worried they'll, like, the one day they'll find out you're, like, an independent filmmaker and not making, like, <laughs> Hollywood movies, like you know what I mean? Well, no, they don't. Well, that's funny you say that. They're hip enough there, uh, which they, they reminds understand me that. Of, okay. Yeah, but it reminds me actually. I did a birthday party once for my uh, nephew on my, on my wife's side, where um, the theme of the birthday party was basically they, they had all their friends. He did like a Jim McDonough film festival. His kid, his kid is hilarious. He was like ten at the time. He's like 15, 16 now, and um, so they played all my movies. But then they kind of store. They did like a little story session, and then they made a movie with like a green screen. And um, the funny part was when I was doing my movies, they, you know, I'm sorry, when I was playing them, they were like asking cute. And this is like a little living room. They're asking questions and stuff. And um, one of them was like, so are you involved in the next Star Wars? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. So like at that, <laughs> those kids had no clue. This is in New York. But uh, yeah, so my knuckleheads and their friends, uh, they know, you know, what the stakes are with these. But they're still excited. And like, you know, I guess when I joke that they could be embarrassed, it's like, I think they're not the type that would be. But you never know. I mean, luckily... Um, I don't think there's anything in your films that's necessarily no, would be embarrassing. So. You, know you know, no, no, no. They're a little silly sometimes, but yeah, I don't think yeah. it'll be anything that would be too horrifying for them. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've. I, do you ever run into the thing where, like, if you're filming anything with other people that kind of don't, they don't, <laughs> they're not involved, and they always assume that, like, they always ask questions like that, like, yeah. or they'll ask you, like, "Hey, uh, how do you get a movie?" <laughs> On, on HBO, and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you're you're standing there with just a camera yes. on a on a on a shitty tripod. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, so no, it's hilarious because when we first started doing this, um, at first they were just impressed that there was like edited together. Like that was the first yeah, thing yeah, they were yeah. actually impressed. But then, like you know, I was making things that were not like, you know, they're luckily I found my tribe and through the film festival, I, saw, I found the people because literally I used to just online and just literally just only virtual tomatoes. I kind of, you know, how I shared 
stuff. It was very trolly and it kind of created a lot of that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. But even amongst my family and friends, it was a lot of it was like a little bit like a hostage situation where I'm holding them hostage to watch the thing. And, um, you know, and it's like I would kind of force new friends to come over. And because, you know, this especially the early stuff, you know, I'm not claiming now it's it's for everybody, but at least now it hits story beats. We're back then picture like a lot of the weirdness without any kind of narrative. And, right, right. And so that kind of like a lot of people were just kind of uncomfortable. And it was kind of almost like I think, honestly, that's why young when I was kind of doing this early on, it was almost a little bit more of I was leaning a lot more into like the Andy Kaufman, Tim and Eric kind of part where it was like almost anti comedy. And I kind of got a real kick out of and because I was promoting them in places that, um, you know, I was lying to get people to go see them. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, for example, there was one called Size Matters. And um, it was about how I used to always get annoyed when they'd upsell you at the movie theaters, you know, like they'd show you like the small and then they'd be like, oh, you know, Dalmo, and, they, and then they give you something way better than you ever want. And they, they just kept, they wouldn't stop upselling you. So this is a guy who's getting kind of upsold at the movies and there's this weird guy. It's a weird experience. But like I was so desperate back then because I didn't have film festivals. No, none of one of my family's friends wanted to watch them. So I was just kind of wanted to get them you out just, there. You were just aiming at YouTube, basically. That back, back then, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, from like 08 to 2015 when I submitted Manic to Boston Underground. That it was that was it. It was just like YouTube. And it's because my family and friends didn't really want to see them. Like they'd be like once one, you know, they'd be the weird <laughs> friends amongst them that would get a kick out of. But honestly, most a lot of times it was like it was like I had like a like a new drug problem. Like they like <laughs> one of Matt's my brother's friends. He was like. Jim, I don't get it. It's like he's kind of almost kind of like pulling me aside, like, listen, man, like almost like worried about me kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is, which is really hilarious <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But um, you know, so like it Isn't was that the really... best review though. Like, dude, I think something might be wrong with you. Yes. Well, for me, <laughs> for the type of stuff I'm making, it was a huge comp. I loved it. It was a huge yeah, comp. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So because so I make the size matters, and I figure, how can I get guys? Well, I wasn't intending to find guys, but I how could I get anyone to watch this thing? In the title. Back then, it was Craig. Do you used to use Craigslist at all? Rants. I used oh. to go to Rants and Raves a lot. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, I used to like ten years ago. Craigslist yeah. was life, and now I don't even touch it anymore. <laughs> no, it's yeah. bad news now. Yeah. But it was, it was kind of like it was honestly a cesspool of, um, you know, um, just a lot of negative, nasty kind of like Rants and Raves was basically just people putting their perspective out there before Twitter, or whatever. So I would put. And this was not cool, but I took a random like internet picture of some, but I was curious, sure to use like a pixelated picture that looked like a, um, didn't look too professional of a woman saying, does size really matter? <laughs> and sadly, like so many men I know are just like clicking on the video it has nothing to do with that. So, you know, it's very trollish, but like people, so in, and because they were coming angry because they weren't getting what they wanted, their reviews were nasty. And because I kind of knew what I was getting into, I kind of started like almost enjoying making things to make them mad. It was just like this weird, I was like making my films for them. Cause that was basically the only people who I could trick to see, to see it with people I could trick. And so, but the positive part about it is because I was kind of making anti-comedy, it was if they got angry, I wouldn't care. And the fun part is I got a really thick skin of people sh- shitting on my films for years. And was, I got a kick out of it. And honestly that helped when little things like when like the monkey one played a place like Fantasia, it was like the one of the first times I started getting kind of, real objective reviews of people that I didn't troll. Like right, it was right. someone who was just like a review. And like <laughs> when it was like one of them, like I think the most nasty reviews on Letterboxd was like this got into film festivals. But the fun part is because of all of those years, like I got a kick out of it. But if I didn't have all that experience getting my butt kicked by people making fun of it and crapping on it, and it was easy for me to kind of- You wouldn't have the callus, right? No, and, and I honestly yeah. think it was a it was a perfect way to go in because- it was almost like, all right, they're crapping up, but they're, they should be crapping on it because I'm intending them to. So it was easy for my ego to be protected. And when you're making weird things, it's honestly a little safe in a weird way. Because when you're making weird stuff, it's it's safe in that, um, you know, especially it's not, it's when not, this is, no, this is what yeah, I was going to say. This is it, where I feel like a kinship with you. Like, I know we've never yeah. talked, but everything you're saying is really speaking to me. And, sure, I love it. And I think like out of the, it's I'm fairly new to this, like, crowd of people that we mutually know cool. i mean a, a yeah. year a year, How many two years? oh that's it oh wow uh well i've known steve i know steve install uh the second second wrong film i love Festival steve CEO. yeah he's awesome so, yeah he's great i've known him for a couple of years because i was in second wrong like a few years oh ago. congrats which film did you have play there uh, i had black jeans woe and time Crow wave um jesus christ i haven't seen any of them like, please let's see those i after. will send I those to you well see that's this is interesting because yeah. i wanted to say like out of all of the movies of the people that i now know that i've yeah. seen their shorts and stuff 
I honestly want to say that I feel you, I have the most kinship with the things oh, you thank make. You. Because, you know, mine have been also, like, mine are very uh, green screen, weird, cool. Tim and Eric leaning. Oh, you're a Tim and Eric fan as well. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Two of my heroes. Um, yeah. Me so too. my stuff leans in that, and, and almost like in that, um, you know, space of it's almost not reviewable because it's so odd. Sure. Type of thing. So I understand love what it. you're saying when you're talking about that. And, yeah. I, and I used to make stuff exclusively for YouTube. Me too. Like, that's how I started. That was I, it. And I did yeah. it out of frustration because I was working on actual film sets and I hated no it. No way. Interesting. So, so I started making my – I was like, I can just make my own stuff. Right? I don't have to do exactly. this anymore. And I started doing that and that's how I started. And all of my stuff was just me doing everything I wasn't supposed to do to piss off everybody. And everyone was like, this yeah. is great. You should do more of it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So then I made half the people angry and half the people were like, yeah. more, more, more. So – I feel like what you're saying here is really speaking to me. And then I watch the movies and they really speak to me. Like, That's hilarious. Yeah. Like oh, I, thanks, I'll man. definitely send you some links. Cause yeah, I, love, I can't wait. No, just yeah. curious. I got a weird question for you because sure, yeah. I went through this weird kind of an internal journey with um, where, you know, I, if I'm being completely objective, mm -hmm. I mean, on the one hand, I wanted to make movies since I was a little kid, but I honestly don't think two things happen. It, the technology became like cheap and available everywhere. Right. And then the honestly, the other one is Tim and Eric because what I use them as an ex specifically them and and why I make stuff is because I they kind it's not that they made it seem like anyone can make stuff, but J the, the sensibility was so connected to my sensibility in such a um, aesthetic that was so kind of cheap, but like kind of like what I, it was basically everything that like I loved about um, cable like bad like commercials and it, yeah. but it, but it it was almost like they joke like uh you know velvet underground was the musicians musicians but no the fans didn't really listen to them you know that they were kind of like that for internet you know filmmakers like us and like i feel like yeah. um it, it was such a kind of like a garage band sensibility and it honestly made you not in like a way that was um have you ever heard them talk about it like there's their beginnings and stuff it, they so I've tried. I've actually sought out and found everything I could find. But if there's stuff out there, I'd love to hear and see it. But those, the, 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 they almost like they made it seem like you can make things too in a weird way. And like a lot of their kind of cultural of the their stuff was a lot of interactive stuff with their fans. But I bring all this up because I had like a weird journey where, for a while early on, I was actually very sensitive about being like um, derivative. And of, um, of, them, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at first, because especially at first, when I think when I early on when stuff got compared, I, I, I was insecure about thinking I was like, oh, is it kind of aping too much? And then, you know, the, the fun part there, though, is I don't know if you've ever heard this, but it's actually something that resonated with me a long time ago. I think it was Ira Glass made the comment basically about how when you're starting out, you might have good taste, but you, you, your stuff isn't good. So your kind of taste isn't matching your quality. And then over over time, hopefully it kind of can you can kind of merge them um but like early on <laughs> yeah you know you, you mimic and this happens with stand-up too i'm not that i've you know i'm a comedian i've ever done any stand-up but like you mimic your idols for a while so you kind of find your own voice and musicians do that and i think i was definitely uh guilty of that probably especially the early stuff before i kind of try to connect into story mm -hmm. story structure where um uh, until manico and i was really just there was no intention of story it was just try to kind of get laughs and i think I do think the beats of story kind of inherently are in all of our subconscious. There, so there's a difference ever... between a sketch and a short. Sure. Yes. I really believe that. There yeah. is. Yes. But yeah. I do 100%. But even like a sketch, though, sometimes can – it usually has some kind of a structure. Not necessarily, yeah. It doesn't have to have the beats of a structure, but oftentimes it does have like a little bit of like an escalation, whatever. Um, but like I, it was almost like abstract for the point of abstract before and then – as I started getting the story, I kind of hopefully started to divert where it's not considered too derivative, but they are huge idols. Yeah, I think that what's interesting, too, is what you said, like how your taste doesn't match up at the beginning with the quality. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is if your heroes are things like Tim and Eric, huh. the quality, even though I think there's a lot of artistry and talent in what they make, sure. obviously, it's funny, like the quality can almost match your taste at the beginning. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Like it can almost From an almost aesthetic do it. perspective. From an aesthetic can. perspective, yeah. But I honestly think the hardest oh, – maybe I'm wrong here. Because I – but the fun part about right, – the, the good and the bad of 
you know, doing what we do, jack of all trades is literally the master yeah. of none where, you know, cause I think to your point, like, all right, you can, you can lo- starting on the static isn't that hot, but then you can kind of, I honestly think I early on, I honestly figured, Oh, it's commie. I don't have to get good at those things. I part of me uses a crutch until this guy named Bob, a really close friend of mine who I, we were still very close. And he was a, um, the guy that kind of led me into this world. He uh, helped me make mannequin. We used to make stuff all the time. We're very close, Uh, but he used to always challenge me because like, I would be like, Oh, it's comedy. And like, it doesn't need to have good cinematography. And uh, you know, he'd send me things like, um, you know, now I forget his name. What's his name? The, the, the British dude who made um, yeah, Don, Don, uh, the the zombie one. He's made Edgar a million Wright. things. Hey, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so he's Edgar a master Wright. filmmaker. Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. And the way he can, he actually escalates his visual humor because of his filmmaking skills. And like, mm-hmm. listen, Steven Spielberg's not known as one of the funniest guys ever, but listen, his mo- movies are funny. And because the way he uses action on on screen and like that's because he's such a great director and so smart you can be funny because of like literally the way you introduce things on screen and then you can s you can um heighten a joke because of your filmmaking skill so I um i think you can kind of um yeah so over time hopefully everything else but i think the hardest so yeah so when you're on your own you're working on a lot of different things but the things that like over time i probably put the most stock in the importance of um kind of working on is like i guess the you know, just story and, um, you jokes. know, because every, yeah, because everything yeah. it really, if the stories and jokes that you, it kind of doesn't really, it's hard for it to kind of go anywhere it, from there. You know, I think, yeah, like a lot of people might say comedy does, doesn't matter when it comes to like the actual craft of it. It's just the yeah. jokes that matter. But I like to, just to say, to agree with you, but also yeah. say like most of my favorite, like actually famous comedy filmmakers are great filmmakers. I think Mel Brooks is a great filmmaker. Hell Watch yeah. It. Watch any of his his classics. They look like how they look like an actual version you of what bet. he's parodying. Uh, Young Frankenstein looks like a Frankenstein movie. Yes, you know, Blazing Saddles looks like an actual western. It you know these things are not. If it didn't, it wouldn't work as well, right? And I'm, honestly, most of the best filmmakers are great. They're funny. Like Tarantino's movies are funny. Paul yeah, Thomas Anderson's yeah. movies are funny. Like a lot of these um, uh, books. Oh God, help me! I'm like, what's her? I'm, she was. Uh, she's been in a bunch of. Um, not forgetting now, but she's one of my uh Francis Ha. She's her movies are funny. She's mm-hmm. she, I'm forgetting her name right now. I'm forgetting so much. You know what I'm talking That's about. Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. I, I think but I yeah, the, about, but... most of the great filmmakers tend to have like a comedic lens to them. Usually not always, but oftentimes. Um, but I think um, you know, it's hard though. It's on the one hand, it's like you try to, you know, you try to involve more people to get uh to level the you know raise the stakes of it and raise the art of it but then at the same time the more people you involve the harder it either gets to pay or to schedule and it's kind of always that balance trying to find like how can you you get too many cooks and then it it dilutes maybe how weird it gets too because i mean if you get too many cooks in a kitchen you tend to if you're doing stuff by yourself or with just a partner who has your sense of humor and then you add in more people they'll be like dude no one's going to understand that or do no yeah. one's gonna no one's gonna get what you're trying to do, and and then that's the thing that sometimes I'm like, no, no, I want to do the thing that no one's gonna get because if I don't, I then that you're not making a big swing, yeah. And I'm not gonna get money out of this thing anyway, so I might as well go as crazy as sure. I can. <laughs> well, like everything you know? else, isn't it balanced? Because on the one hand, like you want to be open to ideas, right? You want right, to be yeah. open, yeah. You want to be, um, you know, you people the worst artists typically when they kind of get really bad it's oftentimes when they people stop telling them no you know what i mean yeah it's like uh, the prequels or something like yeah, that. yeah that was, that's yeah. funny you say that i was literally thinking of lucas for a second when yeah. i was thinking of that and you know so it's but then on the other hand you wanted to have individuality and sometimes if it's too democratized in terms of the decision making so it's it's just fr- like trying to find the right balance it's been a really fun experience you mentioned manicone earlier um me and michael Epp, you seen know, the first time writing a full length feature length script it was kind of hilarious working on that with him. We're, we're not officially done, but we're getting towards the yeah, very, yeah. it's, it's at a place where if we don't fix it at all, finish it at all anymore, I'm psyched the, where we, where it's at, but like, it's fun. You can continue to tweak a script for a while, especially yeah. the style of how I'm going to make it. Um, but you know, the experience with him has been, you know, honestly, it's been like surreal because on the, you know, both he's been, it's been great marrying him as someone who's written stuff before. And when you watch someone else do things, you kind of, it gets easier. Uh, but honestly, you know, the point you made earlier, well, like, and he makes very different films than you do. He like, does. So you have that balance of like, he might pull you just a little bit out of your zone to make but it be- better. Part, you know? Yeah, no, a yeah. thousand percent. But the shocking part, honestly, is like how I was couldn't get over how he got into he he 
wrote stuff in my style and my sense of humor. I, I want to say to yeah. anyone listening, because people will be listening to this. Sorry, Mike, sure, yeah. Michael Epstein is our mutual friend who is also yes, an sorry. independent filmmaker. Uh, you know, I just we're talking about him so much. Yes, he's, the producer of Dialing Pet Monkey. He invited me to be part of that. Right. And he's um, a good buddy of our both that we kind of started talking. He's about. been sorry, on this show, me. too. He's, yeah, there's an episode. Of I know. This yeah, show. Sorry. Yes. yeah. No, I'm just saying yeah. if anyone's interested in who Michael J. Epstein I, is. When I, I said, I know, I know you're talking to the audience and I just was, <laughs> yeah. I was obviously being defensive because I remember that I knew he was on your show. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no need to be sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, no. And also I made a movie with Michael uh, over the pandemic. And I haven't seen that. Yeah, um, is know, that the, um, the Jenkins? Yeah, it's the, uh, the transformation. Congratulations. The transformation. You won some awards. Uh, you won some acting awards, right? I, I got – well, so at at the recent John or Blast Film Festival, we won the Spirit Award because it That's was fantastic. in the spirit of this festival. But I got nominated for Best Actor for that Hilarious. and for my own short. And the weird thing is I played myself, a version of myself in both <laughs> of the things. That's so I funny. got nominated at the same festival twice for playing a, a, a version of me that's making fun of me. Hilarious. But, yeah. Congrats. But, Did you, do you like acting? No. No? That's, what the, that's why it's hilarious. It's like I – I had to fix I wanted to make stuff during the pandemic and it turned out yeah. I made two things where I played myself because I, I didn't have anyone else. That's funny. And I ended up getting those two awards at Genre Blast and I was like or not awards, yeah. uh, nominations. And I was like, cool. Okay, I at least I know I can play myself. Hilarious. <laughs> how did you end up starting making things? So how did you were you So so for me it was um number one is just I had a camera and I fell in love with movies as a kid and when I had a camera yeah. I just started making crappy things. But if I say the real genesis of who I am now, it's that I spent many, many years helping people make their own movies and help and, and being on sets. And I got very frustrated. I got yeah. very frustrated with people and friends, people who I love and still talk to. But I decided that I had enough of them trying to do what they were doing and helping them do that. I was like, I'm going to do my thing out of sheer, utter frustration. And so... Yeah. Uh, I, I made my first movie, uh, which it's it, it's absolutely insane, and it actually it's it's uh, totally a hundred percent me, and I think it defined who I was for the next ten years oh, that's in, awesome. of filmmaking. And it um, is it a short or feature? It's a short. It's cool. a short. I'm, I've only I've only, except for Jenkins, I've only made shorts, and Jenkins. Yeah, I've is only made shorts too. Collaborative, yeah. so I don't really count that yeah. as my. I don't. You know, I'm a co-director, but I, no, I know what you mean. But yeah, it's still yeah. part of a feature, which is cool. Yeah. I yeah I've. Only made short since two. Like this is going to be it, the, the weird bummer of um, the only bummer about trying to make my first feature is I'm taking a big break from making shorts. You know what I mean? Because right, it's like right. I make one short a year. It's been the deal since 2015. Before that, I didn't have a real formal process. But then, like the whole festival thing became a thing, and you know, submit one a year. And um, you know, I'm a little bummed that I'm not going to be making shorts for a while. But it's is the like, feature the manicorn? Is that the, the one that you're yes. working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're, um, I always kind of, that's been the one that was kind of always my favorite, even as I made other things, like other things come close to it, but I kind of always felt like if I was going to make the feature, I was going to find a way to turn that, you know, the basic, the skeleton, the idea, it's not a commercial paradigm that doesn't work as a feature, of course, but just, you know, when I say the, uh, the spirit of it, just a guy turning into a unicorn man, and uh, it's said actually in the future, it's a little bit of like a Blade Runner, you know, a naked gun airplane. It was kind of, hopefully the look of like something like Blade Runner in the future, but kind of the deadpan style of a lot of like physical humor of, you know, airplane, naked gun. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, American Werewolf of London in terms of like the actual transition stuff. Um, but it's going to, it's, there's going to be a lot of kind of, little elements paying homage to the ship but it's not going to actually be any way connected you know well the shorts yeah so unique because it, it's a commercial parody for anyone that's interested sure. i will i'll put a link to it underneath cool, the, thank you yeah. underneath the uh post for this um yeah yeah like it's it's so unique i pretty much guessed michael hasn't told me much about what it is or anything obviously but i pretty much guessed it wasn't going to be a commercial parody movie although that sure. would be insane <laughs> <laughs> a whole yeah well, a whole movie fun. yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, but have you ever seen? I wanted to ask you too. Yeah. I, uh, uh, speaking of like Tim and Eric Adult Swim, have you ever seen unedited footage of a bear? No, you, that sounds. You, what's that you, all about? You should see that. Uh, it's I'm by a group, a comedy group called Wham City. It's actually on the Adult Swim YouTube oh, channel. Wow. And the funny thing is, I think you kind of did it first. Oh, what's uh, that? It's it's because it's it starts out as like um 
you know, they're watching television, you're watching television yeah. and it's an infomercial. And then the infomercial keeps going and going and going yeah. and getting weirder and weirder and weirder. <laughs> I saw that obviously before I saw Manicorn. Sure. But then when I saw Manicorn, I was like, oh man, I think, I think Jim actually did this first. That's funny. <laughs> you know, like you did it like two or three years before them. <laughs> That's funny. I honestly not, think, not that it, no, no one's I know, copying. Exactly. I'm not I know saying you're going. No, no, no. Yeah, I know you're yeah, going. I, not, it's yeah. funny because I think um, I think oh, I actually have a really I'd love to talk to you about this because I have a passionate uh, perspective on this. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the other big influences is actually the Muppets. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah. I love the Muppets. And um, I think there's a few different things that can happen. I think people do rip off, but I honestly think that's a small percentage. The second thing is collective subconscious is a weird thing. When people come to the same things, different times, that is a thing. Uh, there's all kinds of so weird stuff Armageddon and deep impact, right? Like, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good example. It's funny. You mentioned that I was actually talking to my kids last night. I was telling the story. I like kind of, it drives them nuts, but I'll tell like, I'll just like all of a sudden, like I'm a professor and they just, they just want to freaking zone out and I'm telling yeah. them, yeah. So I was basically using an example of like in products, product history, like it's not always best to be first, sometimes being second, like Apple didn't invent the touch screen, but they kind of perfected it. And then I was saying like with movies, like I use, uh, you know, Armageddon came out first that year. I thought it was a better film, but I'm sorry, Deep Impact came first that year. I thought it was a better film, but Armageddon came out second. It didn't hurt it that it came out second and it made a lot more money. Um, so it doesn't I feel necessarily like, I feel like it's first. the one that's more talked about now oh, people don't care one. about deep impact it was a more serious movie but i thought it was like yeah i'm getting a cheesier uh movie that was more popular you know right right um but you can also always say to your kids uh hydrox and oreos hydrox uh, came first yes oreos kind of won there we go <laughs> so, that's yeah, a great right? that's a great one because it's yeah. it's fascinating how oftentimes the original doesn't get the big uh acclaim um yeah so um so where was i going with that so we oh so the muppets yeah so i i you know, I make this weird, I'm going to connect the dots, I promise. No, so I'm I make, I make this, this weird Australian um, community access show I got invited to be part of back um, in like 2011. And it was like these five different kind of sketch groups. Uh, one of them was actually kind of really blown up. You might have heard of Auntie Donna. They oh, have a yeah. Uh, they have a Netflix show. Yeah. Every, yeah. You know, I haven't really watched it. I have got because of my own stuff and my own sense yeah. of humor. People are like, dude, you need to watch this. So, They're hilarious. And yeah, it's honestly yeah. an honor that. I was per not like, listen, I'm not on screen with them at all, but there was a show that in Melbourne, Australia, it was like five different groups. Uh, this guy named Matt Vaughn and his, his wife, Greta, uh, invited me part of basically. So I kind of did this six episode web series. Each minute one's one minute long uh, about a serial killer called the Digby Thurlow show. Mm -hmm. And he's a, also um, an information salesman. So he kidnaps a victim and he kind of keeps kind of taking different parts of this guy off and sell them. So for example, he rips, he's kind of scalps his head off and the guy's like got this weird bandage on. He's in the basement, like screaming and he's selling real hair. And then he takes his fingernails off that, you know, everybody sells fake fingernails. This is some real fingernails. Yeah. And so um, I'm just writing this thing and it's like, it's really kind of dark and maybe a little too disturbing, but whatever. It's like kind of like silly slash disturbing. And one point towards the end, like the, the cops kind of break into the scene and he says, is this one of your uh, clients? And he, um, he just very quickly is like, oh, no, he's one of my victims. He kind of cracks himself, victim clients. So I'm thinking like, it's not a great line, but I just like, all right, I make that up. I'm thinking. Then I'm with my kids a couple of years later. Like, oh, like three years later, because this is 2011. It's like 2014. And we're watching the original Muppet movie. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene early in the movie where this weird demented character is like, he says, one of my victim clients. I saw that movie and probably not since 1980 i started in laser dick at my uncle brian's house mm -hmm. and i'm 46 years old this would have like honestly almost it was i started 35 years before i wrote that thing right now was it sitting somewhere in the collect in the my subconscious probably maybe yeah. i don't know it might not have been and so it wouldn't shock me the way if i like literally was sitting there in it somewhere because it's a weird thing sometimes you see things that you didn't remember you remember but i didn't remember thinking of it but i didn't remember remembering it when i saw it but obviously it was i saw it a lot as probably as a kid and a limited amount when i would go visit my uncle but i had total no memory it would it surprise me if i kind of came up out of nowhere or if it's yep. stuck there and a lot of these things i think we don't i think so a lot of times it's not intentional i have such the story for you on this one yeah because if you can see right here robocop okay yep. no that's not not robo that is a great yeah. robocop poster but this is my whiteboard right here where i write down ideas oh cool i have a little whiteboard up here oh, yeah, okay yeah. Go on. yeah so yeah. Uh, like four or five years ago, I wrote down the dumbest word I could ever think of. Huh. 
which was if I had combined a microwave and the time machine, it would be a time crew wave. Right. Okay. And I thought it was the dumbest word and whatever. And so then when it came time for me to make a new short, I was like, yep. I'm going to make this short about a microwave. And I'm going to call it the time crew wave. And I made the entire short, everything. I actually won the first festival I put it in, like the grand jury prize and everything. And then somebody came up to me and was like, you know, Time Crew Wave is an SNL sketch. And I was oh like, Oh my God. And I was like, What? And I looked it up. It's totally an Alec Baldwin SNL sketch that I didn't no remember. Yeah. I must have seen it. I you must might not have, have seen it. Not necessarily. Uh, well, I don't know where I. I Either I thought I came up the word manicorn and then I went to Google and there was a bunch there. Does already. that exist? I didn't, and, and I never saw that. I knew that, but like yeah. sometimes yeah. it's just coincidental, you know? What I mean? Yeah. So I thought, but I thought I made up this totally unique, stupid <laughs> word. Like a manicorn also works perfectly in this that whole thing too. It's but like, I thought I made that, that up. Like, yeah. A million yeah. of them had already exist. It's like, oh, I guess not. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm just saying, like, I went through the whole process of making it and then learned that there was yeah. a famous SNL sketch about. So I bring it up to say, I don't actually, the odds that they start are like, I mean, listen, I, I'd love to hear my other way I look at it is um, if they stole it, that would be a huge honor, which I don't think they did. But you, no. sometimes though, I think they- No, no, like, it was, are you talking about yeah. mine? They, it was years no, 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 no. I'm talking about like, Manicorn. I'm just going back to the, you mentioned the, the, the parody thing on Adult Swim. That oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. think they saw Manicorn. So, yeah, and, but if they did, I'd be psyched if they stole. That's the way, yeah, way I look at it. You know, they're, I mean? they're actually – they're from uh, Baltimore, so I have mutual friends with them. They, oh, yeah. They they wouldn't steal anything. They wouldn't. But no, I, but no. honestly, my point, though, well, I only say that just because if I did find out someone stole, I would actually be psyched because of the yeah. honor if they saw it. Oh, no. Um, I that, yeah. that would be – I see, I think we view the same thing because I like negative criticism. I like when people hate my movie. Yeah. I also – if somebody stole my movie and did something with it, I would be like, honor. awesome. Like whenever people are like, "Hey, can I have your permission to show one of your movies oh, God, somewhere?" Yeah. I'm like, "Dude, it's on YouTube. Do whatever you it's want." Not enough to get people to watch it <laughs> voluntarily. Someone wants to steal it. Like I can't get people to go see it. If they're gonna steal it. I'm psyched. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, totally. you, had, you kind of have like a, a manicorn kind of went mini viral, right? It has like thirty five thousand. For for my world, that is a huge. Yeah, it's a huge. Um, big hit for me because it's hard to get traction for so yeah um, but that's but also you think that's old youtube algorithms too because i feel like my old videos i just put them up i didn't even try and they got thousands of views now it was a lot hard it was a lot easier then yeah. um i think i don't honestly it's interestingly enough i haven't um i used to be so invested in all that in all that and, yeah 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 and it's funny because i think at the end of the day if i'm being completely honest it was insecurity me in um, like the debt, the need for people to see it. And the reason why I feel that way is it's not that I've filled my um, like I've cured that, but I honestly, I get that ego kick from the festival stuff I have historically. So it's like, I just kind of replaced it. So now with like the YouTube stuff, I don't obsess about it anymore. And it'd be, I would get a kick if something went viral, but I don't obsess about it because I kind of, I get people to see it and, and it's enough. Like I don't like need any more. And honestly, like, the 92 the is festival still that hole in your stomach. Like, yeah, the, because ironically yeah. before the festivals, I would just kind of tr hope to get people's watch and I would try to get family and friends to see them. And it would oftentimes would be a lot of situations where it'd be uncomfortable in a room because it was the weird type of humor I was doing. And then once I started going to actual movie theaters with my stuff, something interesting happened where um, that completely replaced that need to where now I'm in another weird place. If someone will say, can I watch it? I don't want to be in the room with them unless it's a movie theater. If it's a movie theater, it's, it's dark and I don't have to, they don't, if they don't like it, it's not uncomfortable. Whereas in the mood in, in person, if they don't like it, it's now, or if they're pretending to like it now, it's uncomfortable for me. So now like I can see the difference now because it used to only be, they were pretending to like it and I was used to that, but now I can see the difference when people actually like it. And so it's, so I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be in the room anymore unless it's yeah, a big yeah. theater. And then like, I can get kick out. I was, this makes me want to ask you, cause I have, <laughs> I have an answer for myself, which I will tell you, but what is your favorite negative review that you loved <laughs> that you got? Like that somebody said to you or online, maybe, uh -huh. I don't know if you can actually remember what, well, you know why I, I honestly think this is pretty good radio. Do you mind if I do something here? Oh no, go ahead. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull up. So I did. All right, I, Boston Underground Film Festival is like my summer camp. It was a real bummer when we missed it last year because of COVID, and this year uh, it didn't happen either. But they had night stream last year, but they're gonna do it in person. But the very first year I ever did um, 
you know, film festivals when I went to Boston Underground in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I was honestly so excited. It was like it was like I got into Sundance. It was mm -hmm. the most exciting experience. And but in anticipation, <laughs> I um anticipation, I I basically did this because I knew Boston Underground was kind of like they kind of specialized a little bit in weird and unique um and films that were not necessarily appreciated elsewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, so my favorite festivals are like that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna read these I love. Okay. But uh but basically I did a the last 10 days in anticipation, I ranked, I did my top 10 uh YouTube reviews. Now these weren't all of my films, <laughs> yes! okay? Okay. And so I'll read off the top 10 reviews. And I hit honestly 2015, I've always I was always sent to this word, but I'm not gonna say it out loud the word I'm gonna use here, but I'll I'll especially number 10 here. So number 10 was have any of these idiots ever screened? Oh, sorry, Jason. F A Q U. -E. What what mo what movie is this for specifically? If I'm going to be completely transparent, honestly, eighty percent of these were for the same movie. Probably um, worst infomercial ever is the name of it. Cash for Gold. Okay. And this was like of the height of the videos we were. I was making to troll my audience. This was the ultimate, ultimate. It's probably the most Tim and Eric ish. Okay. I actually I love this thing still, and I I hate a lot of my own stuff. But it got it went weirdly mini viral one night where people got really angry, and it was only nasty negative opinions. And it's the <laughs> second most disliked short of mine, where the dislikes way out out uh, number of the likes. I, I'm number gonna one, watch it after we're done. Oh, I it's where, actually I think it's fun. It's actually if you like Tim yeah. and Eric, I think you, you yeah, might yeah. be in. Um, but yeah, so it's a it's it's my second most disliked video too. The number one was um, and it's kind of back for the same reason the troll thing. Uh, John Claude Van Damme, they did a funny and die thing, mm -hmm. and you got to use this footage. And I, everyone oh, yeah, yeah. fighting, and it's not a good video. It's actually probably one of my worst videos. But it was my, I just figured, like, what if I had him on a sealed interview? And he's kind of acting like that. He's in an interview, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. and so people see him in the screen, the thumbnail, and they're like, it's not, it's John Claude Van Damme, but it's some, it's this freaking stupid movie. So that's why <laughs> that one I think is the number one hated movie. Right, right. Mine. So this is number ten reviews, and honestly, most eight or ten of these are probably the same movie. But I'm not. It's uh, it's all good either way. It's, yeah, so Jason Fax says, have any of these idiots ever screened their own stupid garbage? Question mark. YouTube is an example <laughs> of why not to let. I'm going to note the R word. People have cameras and computers. That was number ten for Jason. <laughs> okay. Number nine from Levy Three Poop is if this video was in Lance Armstrong's nut. It would need to be removed. Thanks, Levy. And then, <laughs> so we have. You know what, uh, though? That's a pretty good, like, that's a clever comment, at least. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So I actually think there was. Um, oh, wait, do I miss the others? Because these are all good. Hold on. Nope. One second. I also like uh, that his name was Levy Poop. Levy Poop. Like it's yeah. holding back all the shit storm coming at you. <laughs> the Levies can't break. Oh, here we go. Now I'm fine. The rest. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. This could be the worst video I've ever. So Cosmo 66 says this could be the worst video I've seen on YouTube. Congrats. You suck at life. All right. Thanks, Cosmo. <laughs> Jamie Waters says this is shit. Makes no sense. Probably because I had morphine. LOL. But what does this have to do with the Bible and aliens? Not sure. But so the next one was for fear. Fears. Master Mukau. I can't really. Remember. This one. I'm worried about this guy. This, is, this one was this video makes me want to kill babies. Oh, geez. Yes. Okay. Dark. Now, yeah, pretty dark. Prostatize, honestly, this isn't super interesting. For some reason, I just like this one because it's so kind of, um, this guy's trying so hard, I guess. I don't know. Sexy, question mark? You have to be joking. What's the idea? I don't see one, but I'm sure if it comes with a list of caveats to explain, we might get a glimmer of one. I doubt, <laughs> I doubt it, though. I just loved how passionate he was. So Chase LA 51 says, he just didn't find this funny at all. He was pretty, pretty short. Mr. McPawn69 says... This video gave me genital awards. Period, <laughs> period, period, period. Hey, hope you know what? Works. He's going to carry those awards for the rest of his life. You, I that's, hope that that's art right there. You made an imprint. OK, one more guy does, who just kind of should have took advantage of that vaccine when it was available. <laughs> Anti-vaxxers gets another TW33 KO7 says, well, that was just awful. And then. <laughs> Hulu HAJ says, this is fucking stupid. You really need to do something else with your spare time. You've got to be a complete idiot to find this funny. <laughs> and uh, Pandemus says, this sucks. Stop watching after 10 seconds. Well, I don't know what to tell him. Well, you Liam know what? Then you, should, you, should, yeah. you shouldn't review stuff. You didn't watch Pandemus. Right? Like he didn't even <laughs> see the whole thing. Yeah. Liam Oxley said, what a pile of shit. And we only got a couple left. Joni loves you. And she said, shit, shit, fuck, failure, shit, fuck. <laughs> so Joni loves you. Everybody, you except for me, apparently. And not then, Chachi, okay. Not Chachi, right. Yeah, Lawrence Guitars says, if I had spare gold, 
I'd use it to plate my boots and kick your ass into El Dorado for making this terrible video. <laughs> and number one was, I'm forgetting the username, and it's really bummer because he was really, it was a real, it's a real gem. But the number one, oh no, I got it. Chrono Canada with the Canada spell with a K. He said, this is my number one review of all time. This is Dildo. So that was my <laughs> top 10 reviews right there. So you asked for this one. Is I gave you 10. That's, thank you. That's amazing. I was not expecting this list. Yeah, you got a few. This is Dildo. Okay. What, I mean, that's like you already, you, you did art. You're done, right? You're, you are Dildo. So. Sometimes brevity is, yeah. It's, it's all, yeah. <laughs> so, you got to you know when to go leave, you know? But let me we ask want you. More. Looking at those and like, doesn't there's a part of you? I'm assuming because this is how I would feel that the fact that those people got mad and you elicited some type of anger kind of means that your thing worked as a piece, doesn't it? Well, for guys like you and I, hundred percent. Because <laughs> I think the worst thing you can be is um, boring. Honestly, right, right. As a sad, this is where I'm not proud of myself. I really have a real stable of weird eccentric people in my life um, because normal people are kind of. I'm not saying they're boring. I don't like them, but I just gravitate to to the the novel, the weird, the unique. And when I'm watching content, I, it it's got to do something to me. And I'd rather like and like it's funny because I would rather a big a lot of people that people a lot of people's least favorite movies are some of my favorites. And usually, what can you give me? Can often, you throw me an example? A couple that are really I like messy movies. Oftentimes, I like tight movies too, but. An example of a movie that's really messy, it's not even a comedy, but just a really messy movie that people think's all over the place. And I just, you know, I, um, like Vanilla Sky example. Like it's like mm -hmm. most people think it's just, in, you know, maybe that one in particular is maybe a bad example because it's a remake. So how original can be, but like, I like the original Abros Los Ojos, but it's very different than that. Mm -hmm. And it's very messy. It's all over the place. Um, and I kind of would rather something take big swings and be weird and unique and kind of maybe not work for a lot of folks. Oftentimes I like I, those No, movies. I agree. I feel the same. I like to, to make it simpler for maybe somebody listening, like I'll be the guy who will defend the prequels versus the sequels. <laughs> I, and the reason I, I, is, I can appreciate that. Yeah, no, and, and the reason is yeah. the sequels are better made, better 100%. acted, yes, yes. better filmed in every way. Yes. They don't do it. But the ideas in the prequels, while the prequels are terribly executed okay. interest me more yeah they're they interest me more yes yes so, and it's so, coming from the heart of passion it's funny you say that because it is i literally said the same thing and my kids agree with me where I, we both like it's like from an actual place of purpose like those stories at least you can understand the purpose of telling them and like they came from ideas where why did they need to tell those last three? They're all what are better made than the prequels, but there was no, you didn't need to make any of those. Like it didn't yeah, it like, it didn't, you had nothing to yeah. say. So no, I mean like it, it looks really nice yep. and that's about it. And it ha it is a better acted trilogy. It's a better made trilogy, but it's just, yeah. I mean, it's I wasn't trying to turn this into a star Wars discussion, but you know what I mean? Like, Oh no, you say no Vanilla Sky, yeah. like I like movies that threw the kitchen sink in a lot of the time. Yes. Exactly. And a lot of people, for a lot of people, they don't work. Like, but like Interstellar like, is another try. example. Interstellar is another example. A lot of people. I love Interstellar. Like, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, it's big. It's messy. It's all. It's like confusing. You know, a lot of times those movies are a little long. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's funny. We were talking about like that's uh, my favorite of, Nolan movie, honestly. If I if I'm if I'm honest, I I um he's his movies sometimes I'm a big fan. Um, you know, I, I, I oftentimes they're flawed, but they're I like mm -hmm. how they're flawed. If that makes sense, like I love Tenet. People had a lot. I, it's funny. I didn't see I, Tenet yet, but I've heard. This just goes back to something that I always talk about, but I really believe um, our expectations in life really, really impact our experience. Mm -hmm. And so when you are told it's going to be the greatest thing ever, how you view it versus when you're told it's going to be the worst thing ever, it's really impactful. So everyone was expected so much. And I, I'm, I want to prepare you to love this movie. Okay. Is it okay? So the yeah, two yeah. biggest problems with that movie, why everyone complains without spoilers is it's really hard to understand at times. And it's a plot that's kind of confusing is the two biggest complaints. So me going in with those two caveats right up the bat, I was like, I'm not gonna like this movie. And it's a bummer because I love his movies. And so I start with subtitles because I don't mind subtitles. And actually, I think a lot of English movies, I really meaning like I like subtitles for movies, but I actually kind of like using subtitles and, you know, English movies because just a lot of times you just can't hear I think intentionally yeah. you can hear the dialogue. Specifically, I saw jokes about Tenet's sound mix being bad. 
Yeah, like, I literally that saw that, those, those That accusations. was a lot of talk, yeah. people saying that, that on top of everything yeah. else. The only, my only downside of subtitles, two downsides, and this is goes for foreign films and American movies when I watch them, is like, I like, you know, you, just, you do miss split seconds of the face acting. Like, you literally can't see that as you're watching the screen. And then it's like the weird, dumb... So, sorry for this one, but I can't help myself. When I'm watching something with subtitles, even when I can hear it, I, sometimes I can't help myself, but my head just goes to read it, even when I can hear it. Like, that's like a, just a thing, too. Um, you, but, you're prioritize, I prioritize it when I'm looking, because it's on the screen. Yeah. My eyes are prioritized over my ears, you know? So but because I expected that I wasn't going to be able to understand it, and because I expect the plot was going to be very confusing, and someone like was like, so, if, you know, just go with that. Like, because a lot of times I notice, if you notice, if you're, especially when you watch movies with someone, you ever watch people with, having, with movies with people who have an anxiety about not understanding the plot and they'll be like, I don't know what's going on. It's like, well, they haven't told us yet. Relax, bud. Like, yeah, and they're they like, I don't know what's going on. Like, there, no, dude, there's nothing that annoys me more, honestly, if I'm watching a movie <laughs> and someone's like, well, what, why are they doing this? And I was like, just <laughs> five minutes. Give it five minutes. A lot of people you. get anxiety. And I think yeah. the anxiety is that they're not yeah. going to follow and they're going to be yeah. out of place. And so I think a lot of people's complaints with that movie, honestly, are people who had anxiety about following along. And Again, I don't think this is – this is not sponsored. I honestly think this is going to improve people's experience watching it. If you know you're not supposed to be – it's supposed to be very confusing, and then there's going to come a place where it gets more confusing. And if you watch subtitles, write up – so write those. Now we've kind of eliminated a lot of the um, expectations. So your expectations are – put it this way. I watched under those conditions, and I freaking loved it. Okay. And I honestly, right. I'll never know if I would have liked it before under other circumstances. If I watched Open at Night and I couldn't figure out anything – probably I wouldn't have the same feeling about it. You know what I mean? You, um, um, to bring it back a little bit to us with this exact point. Yeah. Do you ever feel as someone who makes pretty crazy stuff? Um, you know, I've seen all, I've seen at least three of your things and they're sure. all you know, yeah. they're pretty nuts. Do you ever worry that the expectation from <laughs> at least your peers is going to be how, how much crazier can Jim <laughs> get? Cause I, I have that. I think that a lot of my, my, my friends all expect me to keep going more and more to the brink of insanity. And I'm like, that's funny. God, I don't know if <laughs> I'm that sick. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I could actually jump that much farther, guys. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. Like, you know, do you, you know, ever worry about that? Like, you can't deliver on what the expectation it's is? funny you say that. Um, I don't. It's interesting because I don't know if this would have. How long have you been making stuff yourself? Like four years, did you say? My, I consider four? my first official short is one that I made in 2011. So, oh, so I've really long only time. I I long really time. my actual like ten years. It's ten years. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so I guess I really don't think about it. Uh, I mm -hmm. I think the reason why I don't think about it is I think um, naturally my sensibility. I think the day I'll think about it, and I know this day will come because I bet, have a feeling I'm. Honestly, my weird will be being normal, seeing how normal I can be. That will because, like, honestly, it's not me ever aiming to be weird. It's just literally the way I like to play. It's not like it's like what I joke about. Now I know that its sense of humor is weird, but that's what it. So it's not like there's no. And I know there's no attempt with yesterday, but it's like it's. It, I don't think about it. It's not like an attempt to. Yeah, no. So it's, actually, it's, it's it's not like you're saying this will be weird. You're saying yeah, you're yeah. just doing the stuff that you would like to do exactly. And what it I'd turns like to out see. it's weird. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hundred percent. And so yeah. to your point, where the day will probably come where I'm gonna kind of like. I'm going to like, I'm going to try to do something complete. And then maybe I'll be curious. I guess I'd probably be curious. Is, will people be interested? Are they going to be waiting? Um, so, you know, cause with the shorts over time, it's gotten more, it used to be very live action. -y, and then over time it got more and more effects heavy to the ultimate, the second, most effects heavy was Darling Pet Monkey, which is on YouTube now. If anyone if yeah, you just uploaded YouTube. it. Yeah. I will yeah. put a link to that too. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, the one I made last year during COVID, it took me literally 14 months, was um, I'd love to share with this one with you, Bob, too, is uh, it's out for festivals. It's played at a couple of places. Is, um, so I, I had so much fun making Dial and Pet Monkey. And just if I don't mind, just give a quick little uh, like brief overview of what that Absolutely. was. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Michael um, and I, uh, I ran into him because I've had, I would have, I've been fortunate enough to have a film play at uh, Boston Underground each year since 15. And so I was there in 19 with uh, I owe you one bananas and I'm hanging out with Michael and um, we were just talking about what I was going to do for my next film. And I hadn't figured it out. And he was basically had this audio from Tim Tate that he was hoping to turn into this feature link documentary about the weird stories of things people order out of the back of magazines. And Tim 
<laughs> is this artist. He's just really impressed. Do you know Tim Tate? Anything about him? He's um, he's I, worth I Wikipedia. Him. Okay. He's um, he's got a really interesting story. He's got a whole glass school in Washington D.C. Um, this is not like sharing things. It's literally in his Wikipedia. But um, he's been he's he's got his own um school in um art institute and i think he's actually been um he this 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 story was was when he was eight years old him and his brother eight and nine years old lord a monkey on the back of a magazine and um you know it's it's a wild scary crazy sad story um but he told the story on npr they made it into a musical and so michael had this audio that he was hoping to use into some kind of animated cartoon and it was kind of sat around for five years I run into in Boston Underground 2019 talking about what I'm going to next. And he kind of says, why don't you just kind of do your thing with this audio? And um, I have this audio of Tim Tate telling the story of when he was eight and his brother nine when they ordered this monkey. Um, so I, I took that audio about 15 minutes, edited it down to about eight so I could kind of put it into a short film. And I had so much fun with that experience. And I basically just did stop animation. Like I used fit pictures of my myself and my kids and I told the story of you know, Tim ordered the monkey and like kind of edited the pitches to look like monkeys or whatever and monsters and all kinds of stuff. But I had so much fun in that experience making that documentary that um, when I was done last year, I made uh, I took audio of my dad who when he was really sick, uh, dying of cancer, mm -hmm. he uh, shared these crazy stories about how when he used to be called crazy when he was like 14 on and uh, he used to steal cars. Basically, he, he worked at a uh, every Sunday he'd work at a church selling uh, Sunday Globe, Boston Globes. It's like a newspaper um, for every mass, five masses every Sunday. And every mass he would take, steal a different car out of the parking lot because people would leave the cars in the, in the ignition and under the seat. And he would steal it for that 51 minute mass and put it exactly back where it started. And the stories are hilarious. It's like an, a genuine laugh track because we're dying laughing as he's telling the stories. And, you know, he's like driving on these, a little kid driving around, the, you know, around everywhere and he runs into his aunt and it's like, you know, he looks to his right and his aunt's there and like, you know, it's really funny story. So I had so much fun with, you know, the, the monkey one. I took that audio of him telling the stories and then I had all my family, my my sons drew like um, like random people in the background. My other son drew like cars. My wife drew background pictures of like uh, like the church and then like vehicles. And my sister drew like landscapes. My aunt drew all kinds of landscapes as well. My nephew drew like my dad and his best friend. And so I took all these drawings and then I turned into one big cartoon set to his voice. That's amazing. Yeah. And I honestly am. I'm really proud of it. I think uh, weirdly, the funny part about it, Bob, is it's of all the stuff I've made. This is like the. Now, it's funny you ask this question. I'd even think about it. I think because it's my style of animation, it's, I guess, weird, but it's actually a very straight story in terms of and it's kind of sentimental. I don't I submit it to Boston. Well, it sounds like a beautiful tribute to your father, too. Right? Yeah, well, it's funny because I I you asked this question and I didn't even make the connection, but I actually did think about this now that you said now that I'm realizing because how I thought about it is if, for example, um, there's festivals that I've submitted it to that are kind of like hard genre just because that's where I've submitted the place before and they haven't been accepted. And honestly, like as I've gotten older and older, I have a way thicker skin with all this stuff, including festivals. But even because this is so personal, it's clearly not a horror film. I, I had zero frustration. And like, for example, if this doesn't get into Boston, Under, despite the fact that like they're like family to me and like that's part of the deal. They get in, they don't. I've been very fortunate with my films. But if this one doesn't get in, there will be zero ill will in my heart because this is I don't even know if this fits. So I think. Are you saying because you also the audience is yourself almost you made well, it the irony? Yourself. I think the audience. I, I, I'm not worried. Or because your family. I think, yeah. No, I think the, the irony is like my family loves it. Like there's no, this is the most connected. They've obviously been in my stuff. Like my, mm. um, you know, my mom and sister and, and brother, my, my wife and kids, of course, too. But it's not like the other stuff in a lot of ways because it's not like doesn't have a, um, you know, a little bit of, I have, I kind of tend to, in my humor, I kind of, I like to deconstruct things, but I also, uh, there's a lot of, um, What's a term? I am. I'm just missing. It's a word for when comedy can be a little bit pushing, but what's it? Um, edgy cynicism or not, not cynicism. Edgy. It's going to oh, come okay. to me, but it's like um, subversive for subversive. subversive. Oh, okay. There's so nothing really subversive about this. And there's not, I'm not like kind of like making mockeries of much and all. And it's honestly a little bit, you could even say sap. So, um, but like, I didn't worry about it. And I think meaning like, I didn't worry that this might not be, um, 
for the people who see my stuff before. So, because so what you're saying is you let the shell crack a little bit. You know, you oh, I let protected. it crack quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you didn't the have a protected though, uh, shield around you. That doesn't... Yeah. Yeah. But the irony is, I think if five, 10 years ago, I just honestly th think I would have looked at this differently. Mm -hmm. I think I, I wasn't worried though, if, if how this, how, if people were disappointed or not. Like, I mean, I guess I thought it's something that is, this is the benefit of being older, making stuff as I would have been younger. I think, um, and, and it just happened probably in some ways I let the, the material, um, be guided by my perception of how things would be perceived and whether right. when I was first making stuff or whether it was going viral or I might not have been comfortable making this thing a few years ago because it was not like in my quote unquote, um, you know, it's in my brand, I guess. I hate using a brand, but me and Michael joke about that. I think <laughs> it can be a dirty word, but I honestly think. How about instead of brand, you say style? If I actually less... like it. I, I, we were joking how we don't mind that word because it is a Nikki word and I, yeah, I don't yeah. mind it because there's a reason why I go to Chipotle when I, can't when i don't know where i am in the new town it's just and if i'm gonna buy a ticket to a quote-unquote i hate saying third person but if a jim mcdonough film <laughs> i think that's a healthy thing if there's a brand to that because people kind of know what they're getting so with like this film is i think with nothing else from my stuff it, every time you see you will get something different and yeah. hopefully hopefully it's not going to be too different that it's not gonna keep you interested um uh, but in some you know there's they're they're even like this new one, despite the fact that it's kind of like sentimental, close to home, very personal. I I hope to, to think it's still kind of um, unique in its own ways because the way I tell it and all. And so that's I can't wait to see it. I can't. Wait yeah, to I would see love it. to yeah. see it. Thanks, buddy. It's, I'm yeah. actually um, it's funny because when I started at, at um, there hasn't been a lot of in-person opportunities just because of like the year it's been. But like I started at Shauna Shea and it was the first time I watched one of my own films um, with an audience that I was like crying. Like I was, you know, you know, there's a lot to this. I mean, my dad passed away a couple of years ago and he was, um, it was, Sorry he was like that. an amazing, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. He was an amazing storyteller, super charismatic guy. And, um, it was really kind of fun and it was not my first experience just seeing him, um, but listen, when I watched him tell stories and light up a room, like that was something I saw and like witnessed a million times, but two different times I've seen his stuff but not him just make a crowd go crazy. And the right. first time was when, um, when, when we did his services, we, me and my brother and sister, we all kind of did different flavors of eulogies. So my, my brother did a letter he wrote to him um, that was really touching, like, like a couple of months before, just like how much he meant to him. And then my sister did like a classic eulogy and I did like a greatest hits of his, his one liners. And Listen, again, I've never done stand-up, but this was the closest I've ever had. And it wasn't my material. And oh my God. But you got that rush, right? Oh God. It was yeah. and now listen, it's a it's a um it's a forgiving audience, of course, right? Yeah, right, right, right. But right yeah. It's I was bringing I say I he was bringing the house down, delivered through me. And it was and it was like really good. Like, I mean, literally, like when I say it was, I think it was objectively funny. I'll like I'll give you a couple of lines. He was a funny dude, like for example. So he's, you know, in the darkest of dark days, right? Like mm -hmm. we're, we're at the, uh, he's out there with my sister at like one of these check-ins and they're like, so um, how are your bowels going? It's like every morning, 6 a.m. It's like, oh, that's great. You're regular. Problem is I wake up at uh, 6.15. <laughs> so then it was like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. yes, nice shirt. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, it'll be it'll be for sale in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Just it was just nonstop, just like like death jokes. Not it was really fun. I'm butchering, but like I had him down that night. But so that night I got to see like, you know, he could have been a stand up comedian. He could have done, you know, he was a great storyteller and he was just had the so like seeing the place go crazy and his material felt good. And then seeing this film with, um, you know, it's him telling the story. Now, granted, we all came together, to put this together, but like, it's a funny story. And like, he's like hilarious and he's generally funny. Um, and he, everybody's laughing at him. So, you know, I've had all these movies where people are laughing at either, you know, the actor, my thing or whatever. Someone helped me write something or something I wrote or something on the thing that I was like kind of directly involved with. Now I was involved with this, but they were laughing at 
And it but was the, like all the power is the soundtrack, right? It's him telling the story. And I think honestly, the animation because yeah. it's the the family drawing the stuff too. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. And it's like it's, but but honestly, I just think the bad. Like, you're it's you're like, like a conduit on this one. You're just I like the con- the yeah. conductor or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just siphoning through you. Whereas before, yeah, before you're the source. This is like sure. Yeah, great point. Yeah, that's yeah. a great way of putting it. And because I'm seeing um him hitting off with everybody and it's yeah, like yeah. he's alive and it's like i mean listen i know this is like over the top and cheesy but like holy shit man to your point triba I'll, I'll double down it it's like i took someone who really was special that and like this is like the one of the few ideas i think i could like sell and i don't use that word ever but what i mean by that is as like a TV idea, a web series, every family has a great storyteller and every, in the, the, the style of the artist doesn't matter. Cause when you see this stuff, my aunt and my sister and I found my wife, but like, they, and like the art really varies. And you'll see, I like, I'd like to hope it doesn't matter because it's all the people's art to come together and every family's got this great storyteller. And the reality is, is these stories just kind of get lost through the sands of time. And right. so now listen, you choose. I used to get forever. paid to film people's grandparents. Really? Tell, yeah. Like in their later years when people That's were like, really cool. we might only have a few years. So can you come over wow. and just put a camera up and have them talk about the family? So I, I've done That's that a few special. times for, yeah. Yeah. I've done that yeah. for friends and stuff. Uh, well, just, them having that that in itself is so it, yeah I, I don't add like art to, I, no, I usually, but that doesn't it's just matter a video though. yeah but that in itself is enormous mm-hmm. and think about how many of us don't have that and um think about just yeah through the yeah. dawn of time through for this electronic media they a lot of those they just don't they're into the ether you know what i mean no and, I, um, hey like i wanted yeah. to say r- real quick too like you're telling me all this stuff about your father and it really speaks to me um in my own my like really short my own small Please, no, way yeah. um my dad died in 1998 i'm sorry um, but on, that's, wow. on september how 11th how old are you bob <laughs> i am 39 so, so this so you must have been young then. i was 16 yeah he died oh, when I'm i was sorry, six. i fa- actually found him dead when i was 16 Jeez, um, bud. yeah uh, it, it, it's rough but uh i didn't know anything about wanting to be wanting to make films or be creative yeah. or be a podcaster or whatever back then but you know, when anyone asked me why I fell in love with movies, it's because I used to watch movies with my dad. That was like the one awesome. thing we did, and comedy That's movies. Awesome. What was like, your first movie you ever showed? Did you remember? Uh, it had to be right. Mel Brooks. Like yeah. he was obsessed with Mel Brooks, and just in general comedy movies, like Mel Brooks and you know yeah. the Sucker Brothers and all that stuff. Awesome. So that was the stuff I grew up with him. That reminds me of him. You know, so yeah. when anyone asked me why I try to make stuff that's funny, it's him. It's it might be, and I might make the dumbest craziest stupid stuff but it's still there's a connection there with my dad even if he might not like what i make if he was here yeah. today but making comedy movies there is a little bit of crack there for me in the shell of that force awesome. field where i tried like i don't think people realize it so like i get yeah. what you say like it's hard to move move yeah. past what people are expecting and like show a piece sure. of yourself it's not, it's especially something that you did that's your dad it's like your dad yeah. You know, from from another world, still talking to everybody. That's it's like beautiful, wild, man. Yeah, thank I, I, you. I really appreciate it. I just want. I don't thank know. you. I appreciate. Yeah. It. No, it's it's. I appreciate you saying that. It's um, I'm really. It's funny because the weirdly, I honestly think making this film kind of got me ready to make the feature, and in a weird way, not in anything in this any kind of um. Oh, I learned this skill. No, it was almost like a um, uh, like a journey kind of thing, and I made that. I'm. It's the first thing that I made that. There was actually this other movie called Sunny that I made at weirdly about my cousin. It's it's not connected at all to him, but um, I was going through my young, young cousin passed away uh, like five or so years ago. And I made a film I'm not about his. Thank you. It was like a really sad, just like a uh, something he was born. He was a really brilliant kid uh, and his only child. But uh, really, it was I was in a real dark place. And it was like the first time I could make a comedy and I couldn't like. So you had to do something. Yeah. yeah. So I made one. So that was the second time. But this but then I was still kind of very ambitious about making shorts. And so that I didn't really make for anyone or anyone. And when I put it out there. I didn't really like promote. I honestly felt very similar. I felt very um, weirdly that one. I felt more insecure about how earnest I was because like I cry on camera, even though it's acting. But it's like it's just not like the kind of acting like that I'm normally doing. And I think honestly, I'm a little more comfortable with that one because this it's not it's me on screen, whereas this one's a cartoon and my voice and my face isn't on there at all. 
So it's weirdly easier, but, um, yeah, you know, but the, but the, just, um, I, I'm sorry, I forget where I was going with it, but like, they're, they're just it, when you're kind of putting yourself, Oh, sorry. And I remember, so, the, you know, when I finished it, there was part of me was like, I didn't even know if I want to submit it anywhere. And then my wife was, cause this is the first one my wife, like actually co-produced. She basically was like, she really like did a ton of things and really helped me make it. And it was a really fun. I never had knew uh, how I'd feel making something with anybody like that intimately. Never mind my wife, Tara, cause we hadn't really done stuff with films. We were you know, together. Right. Right. We were together before I was even making anything. Like we met, I was 30 mid thirties and I wasn't making anything. And then I, and like she didn't so sign be, up. So, right. so you became a filmmaker. She didn't sign up for any of this. It's hilarious. Okay, yeah, I was She's gonna got say, a great sense a of humor about it. And she actually, you know, she was the filmmaker on that one. And so when I was kind of like, I don't even know if I'm going to submit anyway, part of her was like, not because she, she doesn't go, she doesn't want to be like up there asking the questions, but more just like, how could you not submit it? Like, you got to get this out there kind of thing. But because it was so much about like, just, bringing him to life and for my family and like it's really a great thing for them and for him and his loved ones it didn't none of it mattered like whether it got into fest none of it mattered and but because and then it's like when i went to make the next one it's like part of it's like i you know we're not saying like i've accomplished everything but like i anything i could have wanted to have done in a short i actually did with that one mm -hmm. and um so it's not like i'm done making shorts and i'm above making shorts but it's just like i when I was kind of trying to think of, all right, what else could I do next? I had four great ideas to my old treasure trust of years of trying to, like, I loved all four and, and meaning like any one of those four ideas, I would have been psyched to make a short of. And usually it takes me nine months to find one. And I had four that I thought I could make any one of these four and it's going to be great. I'm going to love it. But I was like, yeah, like, what could I do there that I, so it's like, I was just making that and going through that kind of emotional experience, making it and, getting to finally a place where it's I'm almost I'm so zen about the thing I don't care what it does it's almost like that was like the final because like the that was it like that it's almost like now I'm ready it's how to explain because like for me it wasn't about being the viral thing and making money off the show like I when I was internal. younger it's internal it's in you yeah. right yeah and when I was first making stuff I thought that was the big thing I thought that was the big prize and it's just like in every great movie like Whatever the prize they want at the beginning of the movie, they find out that, that that's really not the important thing. Now, granted, in the movie, <laughs> usually they get, along, they get that right? thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. in the movie, they usually get that thing. And then they realize, oh, they don't care. They want it. I didn't get that thing. Like, I didn't get the big, you know, whatever. But like, I really don't. It's not even like, I mean, listen, if it came to me, it would be, I'd be fun and exciting. But it's not like an aching. I don't have that ache for that anymore. Because now I learned, and this is freaking, I mean, God damn it. This is like worth a million dollars. I learned that the process is the reward and my worst quote unquote case scenario, there's actually one worse than this, but like, this is the one I like to talk about. My worst, worst case scenario is no one's ever heard of me and I make things and then I die. And in that scenario, I freaking home run. I won. Now the real, real worst case scenario is something happened in my hands and I can't make stuff, but I like to pretend <laughs> well, the, okay. the, the, the worst case scenario, well, then I could help. I, well, you know, something yeah. happens to me. I can't make stuff, but like, meaning like if no one's ever heard of me and I don't make a nickel, I'm going to keep making them because the fun is the making them. And so if that is my, like, um, like that's my lot. And that's the, like, if that, that's not, that's not a worst case scenario. I, I win there. I'm, that's a and huge that's, win there. What's a, what's a healthier way to look at it too? Like, I'll say this. I agree with you. And I feel very similar. And yeah. for me, um, I've gotten to a point like I spent my 2010s, which was I told you the last decade. Yeah, I did so much stuff. And I when I say so much stuff, it's not just filmmaking. I did theater work. I did wow. uh, all my pot. I did huge amounts of podcasting. I did events, live events, insane amount. My 2010s were insane. And yeah. so now when people talk to me about making movies and stuff, I'm like, I might take a break every now and then I might do nothing and I don't, yeah. I'm not going to whip myself about it because I'm going to make stuff when I'm ready and when I feel like it's right. And that was such a hard place for me to get where it wasn't like yeah. you have to be doing something to feel like you're, you have meaning. Yeah. Or you're validating yeah. yourself by just constantly working. But I think you know? sometimes like, when you're working on, it's a weird thing where you want to, you don't want to be selfish. Like I'm saying this, not to you. I'm saying this to myself. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm yeah. being completely transparent. I don't, I like to help, but I don't get out of my house much. So my help is like, <laughs> it's very specific. Like I had someone wonderful, a wonderful filmmaker whose her stuff is like amazing. And like, I thought I had a run with Don Cut Monkey, like her runs with her films, put those to shame. And she 
like this is someone that I dreamed to having so her, the success that, that she's had with her shorts. And she was so kind of about like asking about like editing one of her shorts, like with the kind of thing, the style I do. And I was com- like completely honest, like it's going to take me five years to make this feature. I work every day, like 50, 40 to 50 hours, my real job, my real job that pays the bills. And my wife, you know, it's, she's at home with the kids and like, I'm very fortunate that I have a job that can allow us to pay. So I get like a, anywhere from a half hour to maybe an hour and weekends, maybe three hours every. And so it, if I were to ed- do this thing that I do, cause I've had people ask me, well, Hey, can you do that thing for my movie? It took me a year to make Darling Pit Monkey. It took me 13 months to make the cartoon. I can't spend 15 months or 14 or nine months on someone's thing. So now I know that's selfish, but like, I get where you're at. Like, it's like, I, I gave a lot of time to other so people. Much, yeah, you can only put so much yeah. time out there. And especially if, um, listen, if it's your job and you're making money of it, but if you're just out there trying to help, like, it, there, I think we should all help, but it's still at the same time, we can't do it at the cost of our own soul. And if we're not happy, we shouldn't. Like in my case, you know, people say, oh, Jim's kind of, you know, like my, I'm very specific in how I can help. But the bottom line is I only have so much time. And so I can, I just try it's to not be just time studio. though. It's also brain. Like you have, you have only yes. so much of your brain that can be divided. Yes. You know, you only have so much and some of us have way less than others. You know? And some things you can kind of like, for example, I could help with like, all oh, right, I could read your script and I could punch up and I could literally do all kinds of stuff offer and help there. Or I could come in for like a bit acting thing where I'm not going to have to memorize a whole script and be there all, all for the whole thing. I could do that. Um, like there's things that I can do, or I can be on a podcast, for example, or even host a podcast where I don't have to prepare and I can just, <laughs> when I'm there, I give, and then I'm done with it. Like yeah. those kind of commitment, even like if I was a hired hand director, Jim, you're not involved in the editing. Cause anything that editing, I'm just going to slave her forever. I Jim, don't, you're just going to come in direct and you're out. That's yeah. easy too. You know, I know I've been podcasting for 10 years now and I used to do a podcast with friends that we would record for like five to nine hours. Oh, and then Jesus. edit it down with Nightmare. segments and skits and everything. Now it's great, years- sure. Yeah. Oh no, it was great. But now where how I've lasted so long is I figured it out is I don't edit my podcasts. They are just discussion podcasts. And I do a script podcast and I do this one. And that's nice. the only way there's longevity is because if I had to do I, more I totally get it. If I had to do more, this wouldn't exist. This would go away. Totally get it. Yeah. I, I just totally I can't it. I don't have the bandwidth for it. You that, know? Yeah, that's why I can't that's how I have, like, I, um, I can't make my sh- shorts more often just because I just go too crazy. I mean, that's why I, I, part of me, like, actually people make fun of TikTok. I think tic- TikTok's like a, a tool, like anything else. You, it's kind of, you can see really crap on it. I see some any, very impressive some really things stuff. on TikTok. Yeah. I see a bunch of crap too. You know, there's always cream like YouTube, that rises though, too. to the top. And yeah, like, and, and, and Comcast TV, there's this crap all over the place. <laughs> um, but what I, what I, I did experiment for like three months, um, participate in TikTok and I would jump back in randomly once in a while. I'll make a video here and there. But um, what I loved about it and what I was excited about, it was a real excitement for me because when I first started making stuff, um, it was honestly like, I was like, honestly a different person. Me and Bobby would make it. He was usually the one editing and I was obsessed with just finishing it in like a couple days and like getting it out, getting it on YouTube and then being on the next one next week. And like that in the wild part is on the one hand, like there's so much you can't do with that when doing it that way. But then the other funny part though, is like, granted, there's like no stories, those, but like, I have like probably like 40 videos on my YouTube channel. Those like early ones where a lot are just like two days were involved. I actually think those like, or a lot of my favorites still because you know you get different things from those kind of experiences but i wish and from the that, speed and the speed and yes. you're like on your feet and you're young too don't forget yes. that it's also you're young i had the same exact time period man like yeah. where me and my friends for no explainable reason we're like all right this weekend i got the camera what are we doing and we go out there for two days and film a bunch of crap and then i'd edit it together and be like it's a thing yeah. and, and with and, comedy you can overthink it so, so sometimes when yeah. you're just like like putting it out there with confidence versus like slaving over comedy too much can be a problem sometimes right. you know yeah I mean? yeah 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 it's so just curious outside of uh tim and eric what were the other big comedy influences growing up oh so all i was gonna say is i get 
a lot of my stuff gets I get the Tim and Eric, you know, comment like, you know, you must really love yeah. Tim and Eric. But in truth, did it ever bother you? Like it bothered you? No, no. Me? I, I mean, me number anymore. one, they're they're my heroes. So saying oh, that too. isn't an insult. But actually, my real influence, I've always said, is Kids in the Hall. Um, they're great too. I, yeah. I view I view my shorts as Kids in the Hall sketches without um, audience laughter. Like if you, if you took it. the audience laughter, because especially Bruce McCullough's sketches, I don't know if you yeah. remember any of his. They were very cinematic. Um, yeah. Like uh, there's one about the pen, and then there's the. I gotta watch more of this stuff because it's one of those things that I it's weirdly I I appreciate respect, but I haven't seen that much of theirs. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, it's just the general weirdness of a lot of their long. Yeah. F- filmic type sketches that they did which were basically short films the only difference is they have an audience laughing along with them on the soundtrack i never seen them without that so my goal originally was that was my goal was make kids in the hall shorts uh you just you don't have you don't have a laugh track but also because of time and money and just my own skills like i think you could relate to this I use a lot of green screen and I, sure. and I, and I create, and I, I often say, um, I love the yeah, darling yeah. pet monkey fits into this too. And manicorn where I call it, I, t- I told Michael, I call it JPEG reality <laughs> where none of it looks real. Like nothing no, that ha- is sure. happening looks real at all. You know, it's a green screen. You know that that is just a JPEG. Oh, I cut out that I'm yes. going like this. Right, right, right. And uh, that's just what I do. Like, I don't care that it doesn't look real, but I want the skill to be in the editing yeah. and the actual, like, timing. Well, Monty and all Python that. did yeah. a lot of that. Did yeah, you... exactly. Yeah, I'm a big I Monty, love Monty Python, Python fan. Yeah. yeah. A big Monty Python fan. Uh, yeah, Terry, Terry Gilliam's, like, yeah. he, he kind of was the first guy with After Effects, but he was he didn't have a computer, right? Like, right. all of his, yeah. like, intros and bumpers and stuff. Totally. Were, well, Brazil, little, when he yeah. hears something wild, so I've always been a big uh, Gilliam uh, fan and also huge Monty Python. I know they're connected, but like um, I um, am shocked by this, especially considering how much of an influence it's already on um, my set design. And I'd never seen Brazil till like three months ago. Oh, man. It's and, great, and, right? Oh, yeah. I always want to see it. and I love yeah. it. But like, um, actually, it's funny because, you know, it's one of those things where I just, Bob, if no one's going to see you know, when eight people see me in a good feature and one of them complains that uh, it ripped up Brazil on the interiors of the house, I wanted to say right here, I am literally ripping off the interiors. Let's just be, let's just say it here on the record because I love the tubes they use. And I saw it for the first time recently. And I know, um, listen, you can steal for the best, but I honestly think there's a big difference between stealing um, unapologetic what you pretend you didn't steal versus like Tarantino's people get upset at him. I don't understand why they get upset. He's saying where he's stealing from and he's I think yeah, he's it's not a homage. secret. It's not a secret. Paying right? homage, paying respect. Yeah. It's like it's not I don't I don't have a problem with it at all. It's I have a problem with people pretend that when they take ownership for something that they didn't create saying they right. created. That's that's different. Dude in, in my in my first short I literally have a whole scene that I just went to YouTube and I played a scene from Back to the Future 2. And I did every yeah. shot from the scene cool. exactly the same. I was like, I, I would just admit that. I don't yeah. I don't care. I mean, I did it on purpose, you know? Of course. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so when I say Brazil, like, um, I want the uh, exteriors. I'm literally, oh, uh, man, I'm excited. To, I'm so, this is like the real fun. So um, the Blade Runner part of it is, I don't know if you ever watched the making of the original and the, 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 of course. the new one. They use a lot of miniatures. Mm-hmm. And um, I was struggling with probably not going to be able to see this, but I was at first my plan. And this was something that I kind of worked with, like things like tiny clones where I would print. I digitally made like windows of a like a dark looking building and I printed them and I was going to like tape that to cardboard. And uh, it just looked bad. And um, and then I was looking at this Blade Runner fan film that someone made here. This is what I tried to do. Probably not be able to see. Let's see if you can see. Uh, yeah, it's, you can see like. So, yeah, yeah, I kind of see work. it. And then I went to this Blade Runner uh, fan film that these guys were making and they were taking like cart like boxes and like just random junk. Like when I say junk, like everything from like you take a computer part, all the little pieces you put on top. And and when you put per- junk with purpose, it, you don't it look exactly like life does. It's a really wild thing. And these buildings are so cool. And then you look at the Blade Runner set that they built in the 249. It's um just really impressive miniatures. So, um, but the, they didn't really use like junk like these guys, but then once I converted to junk, I've been in this process now, I'm just going to throw this over. Hold on. Um, sure. So this is like an example. So it's like a stage thing here. Okay. So you got 
for the audience can see, I got basically cardboard boxes of the, kind of taped to each other, super glue. And then I got um, like screws, like a toothpick. Um, and each box is different random things. But then right. when I when I paint it, so I then so I'll paint. So you're gonna you're gonna paint it all one color, so it all like, like has dark yeah. gray. And yeah. then I then have like this uh, rust look that I then paint over that, so it looks like old. And you should see these freaking buildings once they're painted. And then you poke all these holes in them. Some have holes, and then you have lights. Light coming through, yeah. It's really, and then you add like against the green screen, and then you add some fog, and it's like here we are, we're ready. And so, like, that's going to be my, like, so I want to, like, a Blade Runner external to the world. It's going to be a very kind of dark, you know, foggy future. Um, and then the internals, I love, like, the wires coming through, the, not the big tubes in Brazil coming that's around. Best, and I feel, yeah. yeah. And the other thing I think is the other reality to the future that we always forget is the future, we always think it's going to be so glossy, and it always ends up being, like, the same with weird things added in, and it's always dirtier than you realize. Because the future is always built on top of other civilizations, right? So It's so funny you say that, because yeah. that was one of the um, Blade Runner things they talk about when they're building those yeah. buildings, but go on, yeah. Well, no. You're right, that's a great point, though. It's a or good point. you think of, like, the Fifth Element, or, really or even Futurama. Yeah. Futurama, like, it's just like, you keep pushing down the old civilization lower and lower, yeah. and just keep building on top. So New York is underneath New York. And then there's yeah. New, New York. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, it I got to see that one, actually, because it's funny. That's on my list. I've seen so many movies as I prepare, but that one's on my list um, to see. The, the well, Bruce yeah, it, in mentioned. Fifth Element, it's great because the, 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 the uh, buildings are so tall. They're above the actual pollution level. So oh, that's fine. the entire like the entire like cityscape is just clouds and then buildings shooting up through it. So nobody's actually on the ground anymore. They're oh, just hilarious. living in buildings. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I love it. Yeah. Yes, I love it. Yeah. So the. um. But I was thinking like kind of like interiors where they might look just like normal rooms, but it's going to be green screen. So, but, um, but then I'll, I can just have some tubes here and there. And then like what I was thinking too, is like, if I have like, like a, a cardboard wall that looks like a real wall mm -hmm. and have that be real, like the color of the wall. So if like, if the key with green screen, as I've gotten over time, the more and more I've done it, the more you can disguise it, like the best green screen guy in the world is someone like Fincher. Like no one knows he's using green screen and CGI right, right. because you can't see any of it. And when you can kind of hide it. So with green screen, I found the more over time I used to be really poor at this, but I've gotten a little better all, each time. The last one with like the monkey one, it's like not intentionally looking real, but like if you want things to look real, tiny clones, I experiment with this, but I, I do a poor job in a lot of cases. A lot of shots are out of focus and a lot of like the compositions are good, but one it's of the things easy. that really it's helps. It's not easy. It's not. <laughs> yeah. No, but the more real things you can add to the environment, mm -hmm. it can kind of help. So, and the more, the less heavy lifting the green screen's doing, the better. Like, and if you can add, like, let's say, for example, a plant or like a bureau there that, so you have things that are changing the, the, uh, the depth of field that will really make a difference. Uh, I've, so I was, I've, 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 but I've failed at that several times. It, but it's honestly, it's, it's a, on green screen too much. Every, yeah. I think it's all a work. You can bring my hair. Listen, Bob, me and Michael talk about this We recently was, I think it's this weird thing where if studios are using green screen, it's a, it's like a crutch and it's like, go freaking go film. But I think it's different for us when we're doing it. It's mm -hmm. opening up the whole world and we don't have budgets. So the key is to, so my thing is, is because I'm leaning into that space, now let's make the best of it. So now, all right, I'm making stuff that is a little bit, you know, humorous and you can see the seams hopefully, and that's part of the appeal hopefully. So I'm going to lead into that a little bit. And I'm going to make some things that are little, going to look a little extra cheap, a little more in Chicago as a buy kind of thing. So you kind of like play to it. You know what I mean? Uh, but Absolutely. then yeah. you can do both though, like meaning you play to it where it's obvious, but then over time you just find more and more secret ways of getting better at the magic tricks. And so I think like, for example, like I you know, you this fun. One of the funnest experiences about building the city is I realize how much of the junk in our life can be used. So for movies, this, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, and that's that's one of the funnest. Honestly, if I could ask, if I could recommend anyone be a filmmaker in the world, it would be for this reason. It turn it's to use an analogy when you have children, Christmas becomes fun again because you see it through those eyes, and that's what the world is as a filmmaker. And because I discovered this late, my you know more or less my mid thirties. You know, I didn't care about sunsets. I didn't care about little toys. I didn't care about little junk. And now everything I see is through the eyes of a four-year-old through what could be done in a movie. Now, it's kind of sad that if there's no movie, I'm back to depressed existential Jim who doesn't give a shit about the world. <laughs> yeah. But through everything that could be a tool for a movie is like, 
it's like I see the world like a kid and like sunsets make me cry like legitimately. It's like this is like a beautiful like how the hell are we getting such beautiful light now? Because you have such an appreciation and a language for all this stuff. Um, it's a fun thing. And so I feel that yeah. with props. Like in the other room, I had I still have the broken microwave that was basically the origin of the time microwave. I have a broken <laughs> toaster that I haven't thrown away because oh, I'm it. like. I should make more appliance movies. Maybe I have a what? bunch of weird ass Halloween costumes. My friend, yeah. my friends wanted to throw out. And I was like, no, I can no. maybe repurpose them. But now they're just, you know, yeah. I, the stuff piles up. Cause I'm like, I could use it one day. It could, this yeah. thing could be beautiful in a different light. And now you gotta be careful. Cause then you start becoming a hoarder. I know. Well, that's <laughs> you you're right about that. Cause yeah. you, you do become a hoarder. It's funny you say that. Yeah. yeah Cause there's so many stupid toys that the kids are done with that. I'm like, well, I can might be use that. Uh, so yeah, I bring yeah. up um, like kind of um, all that stuff because so I have, um, you know, the junk theme. So we get this, you know, my TV went, so we got a new TV and um, is this big board that's really hard. And so I realized, for example, and you'll appreciate this, like another way of adding kind of making this green because this feature, I'm really trying to up the ante where I don't think I can get away with a lot of like, it's got to be, you know, much higher quality of just resolution of the shots and just the green screen. I don't want you to, I, I, I don't mind if it looks like a Sin City, Tim Burton kind of surreal world, but I don't want it to be, okay, this is just like green screen shot after green screen shot. So I don't mind like, and that is a difference there. Like Sin City is obviously green screen everywhere. But I think that's a really great example of you just feel like you're in another world and you're not you're not thinking about the green screen in a movie like that. It's obvious green screen, but you're not thinking about it. Same thing with like like a lot of the early Tim Burton stuff where a way I think of doing that is you add physical elements to the set. So um, one of the ways I figured to do that is like, for example, I have a big board now and then I have different wallpapers. I can have that be like one of my walls. So uh, to my right, if I have a wall that has or like the colors of the background of that interior and then a big kind of tube around my neck to steal from Brazil as I'm put, admitting on the program tonight, I'm, I'm willfully stealing from, um, <laughs> it's okay. Acknowledge. I think also like Terry Gilliam is like half canceled. So you're allowed to steal from him now. Oh yeah. Well, cause yeah. of his stuff. Re was it, what was it? A, he was, uh, vaccine? was it a yeah, no, he was the, I think he defended JK Rowling or something. I actually don't uh, know, but it had yeah. to do with him defending her Chance. or Dave yeah. Chappelle or something like that. So, you can steal from him. What I'm saying is just steal. It's fine. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> he's he's now stealable. You can just take a make time Man. bandits too. Go ahead. Yeah, it's these guys, I <laughs> what I pray is that I don't become um one of the listen, I'm really happy that I'm in my mid forties and I think I still err on the side of kindness and right, I haven't right. and the young folks don't feel like they're like these people that I understand. And it's sad and bums me out because it feels like as most of us get older, not all of us. We start, the world looks so weird and scary to us and we start sounding like cranky or worse, um, you know, hateful old men. And I really hope that doesn't happen to me. I don't think it will. But no, Terry no. Gilliam surprised me. Yeah. I, and, and it always sucks when it happens to your heroes. Like I, I would say on yeah. this mic right now, like Terry Gilliam was one of my heroes. So when that kind of stuff happens, yeah. it breaks my heart. When yeah, I hear him does. say stuff like that, it truly breaks my heart, you know. But they say, you know, kill all your heroes or, you know, like. You know what? I'm not trying to defend him because, and I, what I'm going to say right now is I want to acknowledge, I don't know what he said. So just what I say right now, just remember that. Mm -hmm. But what I, because like meaning if he's, if it could be, you know, really it nasty. It could be really I, bad. Yeah. It yeah. I don't know. Really I'll, and you, you're you not going to hear me defend I, him. I, I honestly only said it because I, I saw two people on my timeline say, fuck Terry Gilliam. Yeah. So I only know that people are saying that. I didn't actually look up what so, happened. So I don't know what he said all yeah. i do all i'm gonna say is i do find that most of the people who are saying nasty negative people about whoever it is and i hope i'm right about this in his case they don't know any folks like that and if he had friends and family who were trans i just am very confident he would not be that listen i don't know what he said I just have a real hunch because like everything else in life, the most let's, the most nasty people, whatever the minority is, they tend to not know any. That's usually what I find in common. Like they they don't the, the people that are the, have the biggest problem with blacks they usually don't know any black people. The people that have the biggest misunderstanding of trans folks have never met a trans person. Same goes for gay folks. And I, I, the sadder part is some people do know those folks and they're nasty. Mm -hmm. But like oftentimes and I'm not defending guys like Gilliam and J.K. Rowling by this, but it's just um 
it's a common denominator. It's the ignorance, you know. No, no, it's the ignorance, and and I don't disagree with you, but it's also disappointing. It's very Especially disappointing. When, when I'm they're not your heroes, when they're when yeah. they're your when they're your heroes, and you're just like, oh man, like. <laughs> Yeah, like like when you, it also feels like a betrayal on your half because you're like, I looked up to you my entire life, and yeah. just now you're saying this. You couldn't have warned me thirty years ago. Bummer. You know what I mean? Like it, it really a puts bummer. a stamp on stuff. Yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it sucks. Yeah, it, it's it's what's it's um it happens a lot with heroes though. You know what I mean? You just find out things about them that uh yeah you know like I'm a huge Beatles fan and like it's it it can get complicated with like John Lennon some of his stuff you know yeah yeah um, no, that's rough yeah. I used to be a yeah. really big fan of Woody Allen till um you know, but I still you know I like his output I was, films. I'm not I, saying I was you know I can watch them anymore. I haven't I haven't watched them a ton, but like it's comp it's very complicated. But it's, I think as a filmmaker, he's phenomenal. If you met me uh, three years ago, I would have told you Louis C.K. was my favorite stand-up comedian. He's a great world. example. He was and, yeah, as funny as anyone. Yeah, it's all just it's very disappointing. And you know, I le- I leave that kind of stuff behind. Like yeah. I don't listen to Louis anymore and stuff, but. I was a super fan at one point, and then yeah. you know it just that stuff changes. I'm not saying I'm not going to bring up anyone in particular, but I do wonder if um, I, I, don't know. I think there's uh, I think these are really important conversations. I think it's some there are folks that I think um, you know I think I'm, I guess let me, uh, I don't want to bring up anyone in particular, but like, some of no, 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 I'm not gonna go. I think <laughs> sometimes I wonder if um, it's hard to talk about. <laughs> it is very hard, especially because yeah. I don't want. Sometimes when you, yeah, and I, and I honestly, um, Louis, real that one really hurts because he really, um, it was so such a disappointing for well, him to hear that. Saying stuff. he's a bad comedian it's, isn't true. He is a good comedian. He's a great comedian, and, but he in his yeah. case it was like people you know defended, but he obviously put he, he was in a position of power, right? And yep. he took advantage of that, and you yep. can't defend yep. that. Um, you know, I the, think there was a yeah. road to redemption for him that he flubbed. Yeah. Uh, he, well, the thing I was going to, the kind of areas I was afraid to dance in was basically, I do sometimes wonder is, is there a time? And I'm not, I didn't want to use him as an example because it almost makes it seem like I'm making his case, but whether it's, you know, I'm not even saying like six months, whether it's 20 years, 10, whatever is like, can people be redeemed? And I, independent of any of the people we're talking about and some of these I think things, it depends I'm, on what happened yes i agree with it, you like they, i think and if and if they show forgiveness guy like kim hasn't shown any he's I, really been kind of um kind of a whatever about it like almost right, like right, uh, right. unapologetic about it you know he's done jokes about it um yeah exactly i think he's, he's not an example i'm referring from, to but you know once again we're i'm remarking this from like i'm a 39 year old white straight guy thousand percent right like from the discourse i see online about like dave Chappelle, dave Chappelle could grow into realizing what he did yes. wrong. He could yeah. actually, if he, I think most people are just super disappointed in him. It's not like they're put, like, I don't see anyone saying like, he's dead to me or stuff. They're like, how could you do this, man? Like you're, you're like the goat. What are you doing? Yeah. Like you're, you're ruining I, it. Like I tried to watch it. Yeah. I tried to watch it. Uh, and I was like, cause I'm kind of like, a um, you know, I, there was an old part of me that used to be a little bit of a troll. I wasn't like ever about trying to, about sensitivity of people's feelings, and I was never that type of troll. But a part I mean, of me was going it's like part of history too. You want to watch what happened, right? It's like well, news I wanted almost. to watch yeah. it and yeah. see like how I would, as a straight, you know, white guy, <laughs> yeah, how yeah. if it would come across. And what I was honestly kind of shocked by was it felt like so little of him that I feel like I just turned it off because it felt like it was all he, he was so obsessed with. It almost felt like he was. um wronged by the gay yeah, he's had he's been his whole life he's been wronged by the gay community and the trans community it's almost like he feels like he was like the victim in this whole thing it's like it was i stopped watching because like is this just like him is this what the whole special is about because it, it felt it's like, like it was it's like 70 percent of it is him talking about it was that. like this is like yeah. what it, it's like it's honestly you would think like that community had been going after him his whole career and like been yeah. persecuting him and i was like this is kind of just messed up and again, to your point, he's like, he's, you know, arguably the goat. And uh, I think, I do think people evolve though. Um, I think you know, that's I what think, the, I think in, like, in five to 10 years, he could yes. come back in a way. But he where, didn't like, you know, you know, what he did is different than like, he didn't like, he said something. What he, Louis yeah, that's what I was trying ballgame. to say is like, yes. look, there's no redemption for Bill Cosby ever. He is, a, no. he's gone right, right, and he will right, always right, be gone right. and he should always yeah. be gone. I agree. Dave Chappelle, he that's can a different still. Category. He yes. can still like kind of realize what the problem is and probably. When make why it back, I think that's you know? important is I do think there's a lot of knucklehead young guys who 
if we are of the perspective of it is over for Chappelle, they don't the way they see it as well as that means you think I'm over too. And because there are a lot of these people we do need to change. And like I'm not making the case for for the Cosby's or, or the Louis of the world, but the Chappelle's who said something, I'm not making the case now's the time to to say he's but like for those who maybe said something, they can move on and they can become better. I think, you know, there's room for forgiveness for those folks if they do really change. Yeah, I, I think Chappelle's yeah. a smart enough guy. I, I bet he's gonna meet some trans folks and he's gonna have a change of perspective. I, 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 maybe I'm wrong. Maybe well, I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, there it there should be a separation between some things, right? Like I, I never thought we'd get our conversation here, but like people that yeah. did things versus just said something, yeah. that is a difference. And I think that that online, that difference tends to get blurred. And it's like, yeah. hey, wait, wait, they just said something. And it is <laughs> it, let's, let's not very throw powerful. Pit, like trans, right? There's a lot of trans suicides that are a result Absolutely of what people powerful. say. And, and I know you're you're not downplaying it, but like yeah, it's yeah. complicated. It's very complicated. And like you made the point earlier, it's like, you know, this is the thing that drives me crazy. Like hopefully none of us have sounded like this, but like you'll hear – there's nothing worse than a white dude um, telling yeah. folks how their experience has been, like what they have or have an experience in their lives. So, you know, if people like just get real trauma from just hearing these jokes, who the hell am I to like say, all right, you know, we can move on and he can move on. You know, it's yeah. easy for me to say, cause I, I, I get really uncomfortable, but it's not, it's not me they're attacking and they I don't have a ton of friends. I have trans friends, but it's not like it's my children and it's not, you know, what I mean, and like when, when it's just like folks who are very sensitive about the R word, when it's someone in their life that's important to them and they see what happens to them when they hear that word, I get why they freaking want to go after everyone. I get it. And it's like it's easy for someone else to say, oh, whatever. It's the R used to say that why everyone's being so sensitive until you live with like a pure soul who uh you know right yeah man like, yeah and they're just like the kindest person in the world and you see them just devastated and like yeah i'll go to yeah. war freaking for that kid too you know what I, I mean? but like, i have yeah. to live in a world i mean selfishly i have to live yeah. in a world where there's redemption for people who said the wrong things because i think redemption is important in general if yeah. you recorded me in high school i would not be okay with things that i said in high school you know what i mean yeah. but the truth is i said the I, you know i called everything gay I'm not sure. proud of that. That is not okay. That was a, it was a used in a different context, not to defend it, but it was part of right. Our language I'm not proud of it. Way. Yeah, I'm not of proud of it. The way no, I, no, right. I used it for I years, it. and I gotta believe that I have I've grown as a person, and I don't say that anymore. I don't say the R word anymore. I said the R word constantly. Yeah. Back no, then, you know, I just totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, you I'm, watch movies yeah. back then, and like the movies we watch, they say those words like casually. So. No. I mean, people do grow from that. I think Dave Chappelle can still grow even as a 50 yeah. year old, right? Like, yeah, I hope. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but, th you know, it's funny, Bob. Uh, honestly, comedy for a lot of you hear this whole thing, you know, comedians, you know, very upset, concerned with cancel culture, this, anything. Mm -hmm. I, um, this, the uh, kind of going Dave back Chappelle, to like, he made $20 million from that. Oh, special. my God. He's not canceled. Wild. He's fine. No, he's fine. He's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. hundred percent. But I honestly, because as, as culture changes and time changes, I never want to be punching down. And um, yeah, absolutely. I, that's why I love about the kind of this playground of like, whether it's Monty Python, the Muppets, Tim and Eric, like they're, you're, I'm not like, and you're playing this surreal, weird world. I'm not worried about, um, you know, offending me. I mean, um, I would be worried if I had something I felt could be insensitive, but my jokes are not at the expense of, of yeah. people yeah. like that. Honestly, and I think it's worth talking about just because of the conversation we're having. And um, Darling Pet Monkey, I actually was really torn when I was making it. And because the reason why is, and if you've seen it, you might know where I'm going. I was, um, you know, in my stuff, I'm honestly by myself in my basement. And I schedule that. I, yeah, you get it. And I and I play so many roles and I do so many things, frankly, because I'm the easiest person to schedule. I, it's so easy to coordinate my schedule myself. And then I'm a, you know also a huge fan of like the silly Eddie Murphy playing a million parts. And um, so with this monkey one, I had you know my brother, I'm sorry, my my sons involved. I you know I had, but you know this this actor Diana Porter involved. But like there was this eight different women, and there's the monkeys and there's the dad and. I like I it'd be a lot easier if I just play the monkey, I play the dad, I play all the monsters in the back and I also play these women. But like I don't this is not a joke about trans and I hope it's not 
perceived as a joke about trans. It doesn't come off like that at all. I, I'm glad it doesn't. But I was yeah. very nervous that like someone could be. And, and, and here's what I guess I will say: if someone isn't, a, that is not my place to say they shouldn't be. Um, yeah. If they are, and I'm sorry, but like that was not my intention. Is the only thing I'll say. But I honestly think it's worth noting though, just because I think these kind of things should be thought about, even if, um, you know, because I ultimately I was going back and forth with Diana about when we were talking about it early on. And, you know, I ultimately decided, you know what, this is my intent's important. And if people are upset, I, I'd want to talk to them about it and I'd want to, you know, express, you know, the the purpose, the intent and what I was going for. And I don't think it would be insensitive or hurtful to anyone because uh, I'm not making it's not about a guy wearing drag is the joke. It's it's the fact that you didn't have anybody to film with. I'm playing in yeah. most of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, play, I, can, no. I was yeah. going to say, I've had this exact literally <laughs> this exact thing, a little bit different. Uh, yeah. Most of my shorts star my friends uh yep. and my friends thankfully are kind of talented people so like i, I happen to have actors friends you know com com funny people but they tend to be all white dudes and yeah. i like i think it was i think it was like two or three years ago i actually had i was at a party and i had a bunch of my uh bunch of lady friends sit me down and be like how come all your shorts are sorry oh, nothing yes. but dudes Yes. And I was like, and I kind of had never considered it before. That's and so funny. I, and I, I so. really had to like sit down and think about it. And yeah. I was like, I promise I'll change that. The funny thing is I haven't made that much since that I was confronted. Yeah. But I haven't really had a chance to change it. But um, I said, I basically said in response after <laughs> thinking about it, I was like, well, you know what? A lot of it is just people that are free at the time and they happen to be the, my white dude friends and also i make people do a lot of stupid things and i think maybe my internal clock or my internal voice is like don't do this to one of your lady friends make one of your dumb idiot friends have to suffer through this part instead of bob, doing it. you, you know, know what i mean so funny bob uh yeah. two thoughts yeah a i had the same exact criticism happening yeah b or three thoughts b it's not our fault, quote unquote, but also we can do better. Well, we can do better. So, yeah. I, I'm yeah. acknowledging. So it's not that. our fault because yeah. we were basically in my, you know, similar cases, we were just kind of with the people in front of us. And then we didn't have any platform. It was just us goofing around. And then it's now in a platform where it's playing things. And now it's in a place where representative is relevant. And so in my case, Diana Port, ironically, it was kind of funny. She gave me a hard time a couple of years in a row. And um, we met. Uh, years before that when um, through stuff I've seen hers and she was a fan of Manico. And so um, it was funny because like she was like, finally, you know, but like I, I, you know, I had her in one of my films after she was giving me a hard time about this for years. So very similar. So, so on the one hand, it's like, okay, I'm by myself. What am I going to do here? But at the same time, we can challenge ourselves, you know what I mean? To, to kind of get beyond that. And so I, it took me forever. <laughs> so, but yeah. I've done so. Let me like, listen, I have my, my wife and stuff all the time, but oftentimes it's me and me and me and me and me. Um, so it's not necessarily, yeah, that it's yeah, just, I get you. but I, same time, I we, can make a, we can make a better effort. And I'm trying to do that. Yeah. It's something that's important. And it's, so it's one of those things because something that I think is really obvious is whether I like it or not. I mean, it is kind of, it's just really been like 95% of all the stories ever told. And there's probably a subset of folks like Jim, we don't need to see more, this, is, but whatever. But like, right? you know, I got to still yeah. make the thing just, even if no one sees it just for my own kind of sanity, but I get, you know, the perspective of, you know, it, we've, we've, there's times where I like, okay, so I, you, I know you haven't seen time crew wave, but the, the bad guy and time crew is so dumb. It's I, can't, <laughs> I don't think it could be offensive, but right up my alley but, then. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's extremely stupid, but the bad guy is constantly complaining about his ex-wife and yeah. I know he's supposed to be a bad person and his complaining he's an asshole but I still checked with like I had I asked like three of my lady friends like is this okay like okay. that he's complaining about a woman like am I missing something I'm pretty sure I was fine they were like yeah yeah it's fine but I had to check with them to make sure I, I wasn't it. missing some like in misogyny i was making fun of him for that but i was like am i missing anything tell me if i am you know and they it's they really it and complicated like, no. because like for example when i'm in the writing the script like with michael it's like there's sometimes when um i want to write as a woman but then it's like it's like stereotypically to your point so it's like is that bad too but then i don't feel like in those situations like you do you more harm than good by le not writing it you know what i mean yeah 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 um 
it's complicated, but it's and like, Michael's pretty. He's pretty good about this stuff. Oh yeah, like he is really for, good for for a dude. He's got he's got a pretty good pulse for it. Oh honestly, he's like um like a certain thing. You know whatever the term is on my shoulder. Probably like, should give credit to I Sophia for that though. <laughs> whatever, but like I, they've been very kind of passionate voices since I've met him. That I Definitely. honestly kind of see the world through their lens in the best possible way. Like I I feel Absolutely. like um meaning like I kind of over time I think they've definitely. Uh, in the best possible m- way of modeling, like I think things, it's like it's like there it's almost like a little bit of a compass in the best possible. Way. Like my dad was a compass for me. Like how I viewed the world, it was not that I would do what he did, but like he was a compass, and they are a compass of kindness and compassion. The two of them. So how they feel on an issue, sometimes I will either stop and reevaluate if it's different than mine and, and kind of probably try to unpack why that's the case because I, it's probably they're really, erring on the side of kindness is probably the, where they're coming from where they're coming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, no, I was going to say knowing that they might listen to this, this kind of, I know that like whenever I get like sappy, it kind of, I know Michael always kind of pushes away whenever I get sappy, but like, the truth is, I think I caught that, him once a little bit. Maybe early, he, was, he, he cracked a little bit once. Me, I could be wrong. He did. <laughs> I, could, I could be wrong. Like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like whenever I start to try, like whenever I tell him, like, "Hey, man, you're a really good friend. I love you." He always, yeah. I, I've always feel like he's like, "That's a bit much." But well, he's Generation he, X, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, us. That's X. that's we're we're intimate. We're very um, anti intimacy. An- anti intimacy. But yeah. Michael and Sophia uh, are two people that I've only known for like a year, right? I mean, like yeah. really. And there are two people that come into your life and you're like, you know, there's people that you said, uh, I forget what word you just used, but they're like people you don't want to disappoint sure. either. Like I, I got it. Like if I make something, I'm now going to be like, if I make this, is it going to disappoint Michael and <laughs> Sophia? Like I got to like I got to make, and, and, and like, I know that if it doesn't, then that, that I'm on the right track, like, you know, like socially and, and in the right part of history and everything. Like they're that kind of, that kind of the friends that come into your life. You're like, I got to make sure. Because well, they, they like you were saying earlier, really, they they stand by principle, and they will lose fr- they would lose friends over what they believe in, and I don't always right. have that courage. And so you know, you know same, they're very same. principled. Yeah, they know they're very principled. These things, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah like they make you. They kind of make people around them better because of it. Hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. if you're listening to this, guys, take that as a complete. Uh, compliment because <laughs> I mean it. Of course. You and go, yeah, like yeah, I know they do. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, they're great people. I uh, we're very. It's funny because I the one thing I do find fascinating, and this is actually weirdly reassuring, and gives me um, uh, co- uh, kind of gives us all confidence. And you'll notice this if as you know years from now, is there's more of these folks that you. This it's actually a really small world in this genre circuit community because mm-hmm. very much yeah. And it it's actually it makes you kind of feel more. Um, like not that you've made it because I'm not making any money, but like it's wait, wait, it's like all these folks. It's Somebody's like, making money. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean we're not. I'm not making, but like at least like I feel like we're like I don't know. It's just like a, the stuff that all these folks are doing that are friends of mine are really cool stuff, and um, it's really playing in cool areas, and it's and I think it's something to do with just if you just hang out long enough, there's just there's not a lot. All the folks that are doing it still, there's a little bit of that. You kind of get to know who everybody is and. I think it's one of those things that also kind of um, it weeds out assholes because it's such a collaborative media. The people, the, the assholes just kind of get shunned or ignored or they just kind of don't stick around because you can't really, um, you just don't survive as an asshole in this space. So I think the folks that made the nice people with very few exceptions, and it's a much smaller world than you realize, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and I'm, like I said, I feel, I don't know how long you've kind of been embroiled in that world. I. I kind of got with it because of, I think sick and wrong pulled me into the initial like I, he's outer really circle. About, yeah, Steven's the best. He when it comes creates to, communities. He's like one of the guys. He's, yeah, he's like a master. Of that. Yeah, he Steven's, brings people I love together. He, yeah, he's. Yeah. I love Stephen too, even when he gets mad at me. Um, Has he gotten mad at you? I think I annoy the shit out of him all the time. That's funny. Uh, I think it, that's. His, I always just thought that was his personality. I when I do it with him, I always just think it's like it's a role he's playing. But maybe that it's different with you. <laughs> no, no. I think I think Stephen, if you're listening, I don't know if I'll ever listen to this. I think that online, I'm just like a slight bit too silly for him. In uh-huh. person, we seem to click way better. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm person. just reading him wrong. But I, I Stephen knows I love him. I talk to him. I every get day. the sense that he's a curmudgeon. Is he's a lovable. Super? He's a lovable man, and he's, oh, he's the best. he brings people yeah. together. And he brought. I feel like getting into sick and wrong was this beginning, and then I got into genre blast. Uh-huh. 
That's awesome. And through genre blast and sick and wrong, I met all these amazing people. And now did I you feel like to Boston underground. Uh, I don't, I don't think I did. You should I probably should. This year. I don't know if I have anything that qualifies. I well, mean, maybe play, Jenkins does. We, what that, about the ones you've played? If it made they might be too years. old. They might be too old. How old is the most recent one? Jenkins and would be on that. Uh, f- probably three years, four years. Yeah, Manicone, I don't know. I can check. I can look on Man- film freeway. I, Man- I made Manicon in 2013, and my very first film festival was 2015 with Manicon. Time Wave is 2018. So, yeah, you can submit that one. Yeah. I could. I, I'll try. Um, or they might reject me. It's whatever. a big festival. It's yeah. a little pricey because of a big festival, but it's a great yeah. one. It's my favorite. You know, I say favorite meaning. I don't. I usually only go to the ones in Massachusetts because of uh, just right. restrictions. So there's yeah, a million. Genre Blast there. is two hours from me, a drive. So yeah. It, it, so I've always, I've yeah. never got to a sick and wrong yet. Um, it, it's a. It was Neither a have I. And Stevens, I know Stevens mad at me about that. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I actually met Steven for the first time actually um, this summer when we went to Disney World as a family. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, he told. He, yeah, he mentioned that. Yeah. I think you guys took a uh, picture, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it'd be my dream was to. Um, you know, that was the only downside of, well, yeah, just the downside. The only, there was only one downside of the pandemic. I almost said out loud. Did you, did you almost hear me say that? I almost said the, the downside, downside of the pandemic. Yeah. Like my, I'm a, I can't even get it out. It's so stupid. <laughs> what a slip of the tongue. Holy shit. Uh, one it's of the many downsides. 19 of the months, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always, this was a, a real crazy, arrogant thing. And I want to emphasize I, this wasn't coming from a place of arrogance. Um, but for whatever reason, I got in my head. I don't know why I thought this, but like I didn't want to go to Fantasia in person until I had a film play there. But I didn't know if I'd ever get a film in. I didn't think I'd ever get a film in, but I kind of had that in my head weirdly. I don't know why. So I submitted every year and then Darling Monkey got in, but then it wasn't in person. So that was the year I would have went. But that was that's like a, I'd love to go to that one in person. That would you know, be a dream. I got to say, man, like that's one of my I have a goal. List yeah, that was on still. Yeah, and Fantasia's on there, which I I haven't been in Fantasia. So you've actually been in the one of my festivals where I'm like, it was That's a dream a come true. Yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah, and I honestly I've had many many rejected there, and now and I my newest one, and I like I was saying it didn't bother me because it's especially because it's so personal, and I'm over that. Right, but right. my newest got rejected, so I don't like take it for granted. You know what I mean? Uh, by any means, and it's um, and honestly, I the I, it's the weird thing. The weird thing too, though, I think for the rest of my life, though, if I never get anything in. I think I'll never be bitter just because I had to play that once, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I I have slowly, like, checked off most of the festivals I've wanted. That's awesome. That I care about. And they're all pretty small. Genre Blast is a great one. I haven't gotten in there. I I think I've submitted a couple times. I've never gotten in there. That's a great one. No, it's a great one. And at this point, I feel like it's, it's, I'm so close to it because I just love everyone that's like, where's that one? That's in uh, Winchester, Virginia, at Alma Draft House. They hold it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I know it's a really great venue, and Nathan is amazing. So is Chad, and I, that's where I met Michael and Sophia for the first time. And I said like one sentence to Michael, not knowing that one day we would actually start talking and then make a movie. You know what I mean? Like had no clue. But I've met yeah. and I've met other friends there, and that's the first time I met Stephen in person. So it, it's like the second part of my life because my I'm really you know I'm really one of those Baltimore people that's just everything is Baltimore. I, my whole life is here. That's awesome. But I, I met all these other amazing people through like genre blast. Uh, it's a great community. Yeah, yeah, and second wrong too. I don't want to both well, of those. All, festivals. Most yeah. of them are like in locally, for example, we have uh, Skip Shea runs the Shauna Shea Film Festival, and uh, you know it's not as known as like Boston Underground or genre well best, but maybe in its own community. It, Cause it's not a specific genre, uh, but like, it's one of the coolest, it brings in all the genres in New England and it's like an annual event. Um, it's one of my highlights of the year. So, you know what I mean? Different film, different festivals didn't bring, didn't bring different things to the table. You know what I mean? And they're all, it's so vital these days because of everything's gone online to have where it's so rare. We even get to watch movies with each other to have these communities is huge, you know? Yeah. And honestly, it's, <laughs> I hate saying this, but it's one of the things keeping me on Facebook, I think, because I was thinking about leaving Facebook, but then I met all these amazing people who are only on Facebook. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, I, I would lose all these new amazing connections if I leave the actual platform. And I don't want to do I that. I get it. You know, and it sucks because kind of I kind of want to leave the thing that destroyed Western civilization. But now I know. <laughs> I know. now I'm stuck on there. It's you know? weird, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, well, you just don't yeah. want to lose all those connections. Right. It's important. Well, yeah. You like those people and those people. It's not just about connections. I shouldn't say it sounds hollow. It's honestly that I really love the people I met. 
Well, because when you, you leave, know? you're actually, you know, there's people like you and I, for example, we know each other there. And it's like when people say yeah. I'm getting on Facebook, then all of a sudden they're just walking away from a lot of those relationships where they're only happening there. You know? Yeah. I mean? The truth is, like, if I left Facebook, when's the next time you would ever see me exist? I mean, now that you and I are connected, you know, we might could be connect different, different ways. Yeah. Yeah, but but like you, but on we, the average, it, if we didn't do this, and we it, the average would be gone. Guy. It would be gone. It'd be like yeah, one, yeah. It, it, I might see you at a festival or through Michael and Sophia, or if you needed something, and you're like, hey Bob, can you do this? That'd be a hit. Yeah, I like having people in my life on a basis. You know? Oh, totally. You know, we're yeah. used to it, and maybe that's what's not healthy though. Maybe we all should be separate, and not see each other every day. Well, I think. Like everything is balance. Um, yeah. I think if you're only on there, that's not healthy. But it's it's it's. I think it's it's um. You know, pen pals back in the day was it's like its own form of that. It's just a question of like balance. If you're on too much, it's too much. Right. But having an outlet to stay in touch with these folks and to be, you know, thank God, man. Like if we didn't have that, like I don't even know. How, you know, there was film festival before social media, but like, you know, it was just such a weird vacuum. You probably were talking on the phone here and there, and then. You go to the events. It's just like you don't get nearly like the community gets built in this situation, you know? Well, like, I mean, I think the person who actually defined this for me the best was Michael, where he was like, yeah, film festivals, the true the true value is the people you meet. Like, yes. the screenings and stuff are great, and getting in is great, but in the end, it is the people you meet. And, I like, the living proof is he was saying that to me, and I know him because of film festivals. Right. So, <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? He's 100%. right. Yeah, like – and it's it's not so much the awards or anything. It's just I kind of no. I kind of like being around my people. I say yes. that that sounds that sounds bad, but you know, no, movie it doesn't. People, movie people. No, it doesn't because it's re- reality is is like in my case, I have so many people I love, uh, family and friends, but they're just it's you know, this is just not their world. So it's 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 it is there it is that is a weird thing when you go to all the other genres. You you know, there's so much in common with us at the genre festival, but then you like when I go to a film festival with like a mix of genres you realize it is this kinship and i have friends in this community that are not like making the same type of movies but we have that in common like we're brothers making movies in that sense and it's like when you have that struggle in common you just relate to it you root for each other and even if you're making completely different movies it's like you're in that journey together i think you even have that kind of kinship if you don't even like each other's movies like i totally like i there's definitely filmmakers who don't like my stuff and i'm fine with it who I could totally hang with, and you oh, know, yeah. I'm like okay that they I like I have a few friends where I'm like I know that they hate my shorts, <laughs> but I'll still talk <laughs> to them and hang out with them. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? I'm I'm probably embellishing, making. but I can tell no, on their face. I can tell on their the type face. Of stuff we're making though, it's honestly, it's like we don't. Ex- it's not like we're expecting. We're not yeah. making for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and I'm I'm fine with somebody not liking my stuff, and I can also be like, you know, you couldn't have made it. Like even if you hate it, I know you probably couldn't have made the thing I made because it's so nuts, and you probably would have never done that. So I kind of exactly. have like this weird sideway arrogance about some sometimes about it. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> well, this is right to your point. No one can make this except for me. I'll say to myself, yeah. Like that's right. the thing. That's why I'm not worried about people's stands. Like you're not going to make the same movie. You're not. Yeah. Even if you, I gave the same script, same tools. You're not going to make the same movie. So go for it. You're gonna and. From that conceit alone, you're gonna love Jenkins because that's kind of the. I can't wait. It's like that's kind well, of the I theme of idea. Jenkins. It's, yeah, it's each one's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, seeing it, but I yeah. can't wait. So that was kind of our whole thought process. But yeah, I always, I always say like, I kind of always want to make stuff only I could do. Yeah, you know? I feel like you do the same thing. I think. Um, part of me, I think you can get adventurous in that though, because meaning, if you kind of attack something that you wouldn't think you could do with your imprint on it can be fun too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's where I could imagine myself, quote unquote experiment in the future where I'm going to take something that I wouldn't think would be the type of thing I would make and see what happens when I try to make that thing. Like I kind of, Oh yeah. You should scare yourself a little bit. Yeah. Cause I think um, horror and comedy are, are two sides of another coin, you know, tension, tension release. It's the two genres where you can't lie to yourself in the sense that, you know, if the audience liked or not, you see a drama, you don't know car comedy if they're not screaming and laughing you can say whatever you want but they didn't like it and so they're they weirdly have a lot in common and it's no surprise that jordan peele's first movie wasn't like one of the best horror movies of all time and he was one of the best sketch performers in comedy of all time i had no uh, doubts going in because key and peele are two of my heroes oh, so they're amazing i love yeah. them yeah too and, those, and i love dust as well yeah and um yeah. 
I was going to say their uh, their skits on that show were basically just beautifully oh, made short films. And they, well, they were making exactly. They weren't yeah. taking the shortcut on making yeah at all. They're dark just beauty. so beautiful. Yeah. And so like horror, like I part, I could picture like um, making a horror, um, and maybe you know who knows. I don't know. You know. No, I actually like if it was like a psychological unnerving David Lynch style horror. No, I, I agree with you. I also just it's there's so many horror film festivals. I, I hate to say it, but like there's so many horror film festivals. I'm like, I should probably just make a horror short and see well, how that school. goes with me and with the festivals. You know, it's also a um, I honestly this is my bias, but I think comedy is the hardest because to get people to like laugh when they don't. It's just people think I honestly think it's weirdly the most like. I'm not going to laugh at this thing. And to get them to laugh, I think, and it's like, you're, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But so I think comedies, whereas, I don't know. I think um, it'd be, it'd be fun to try other things eventually. Who knows? Yeah. And comedy also is like, I always say, uh, I feel like, well, Manicorn has a lot of jokes in it. Like you have actual jokes. I feel like a little bit. Yeah. A little, but yeah. a lot of it, I don't like if you can follow this. Uh, I usually say like, I aim for the comedy of existence. Like, it's not I don't really write jokes. I'm not a comedian. I usually don't either. Right. Yeah. It's like I want the joke to be you're laughing at somebody putting their time and effort sure. <laughs> into this weird thing existing. And that's also why production matters, right? Like you want it to look kind of yeah. like there's a lot of effort in here. And you're like, why did they do that? And then you kind of laugh later when you're thinking about like. There's a lot of stuff I've made with the Ezra that was kind of like the point. The, the joke is almost the fact that I made it as much as the content of the screen. Right. Like like after a screening i once had somebody come up and he's like i just had to shake the hand of somebody who put any time into that <laughs> and i was like there it is that's the joke right that's that's, awesome. that's the joke i wanted to write yeah i love it um well i don't want to use any more of your time we've been talking for a while now i had a blast i'm yeah. gonna be this is a good time just because i would probably you know be going to beds but yeah know, yeah this no is, this, um, I'm, this is great this is awesome i'd yeah, love to no. come back yeah, I would definitely love to have you back. And man, it's just great to finally talk to you. This was fun, man. I really want to see yeah. your stuff. And I'm, um, um, uh, I will absolutely it? bother you with links. Don't worry, that no, would be. I, I can't wait. Yeah, I won't watch them tonight just because I'll be sleeping. No, but no, no, I, no. I'll watch them tomorrow. No, you have to watch them tonight. <laughs> or else we're. Ne I'm not even airing this until you watch them. No. Yeah, you're I'm gonna kidding. see the the. View, yeah, you're gonna when the. I'm not there <laughs> until the view count goes up by one. <laughs> Well, I can just I can just keep refreshing that. Um, uh, that doesn't work. I learned that a long time ago. Outside, <laughs> I know, right? I did the same thing. There used um, to be three hundred six of your own views you could get, but they stopped that. Yeah, I learned. All I the remember truth. the three hundred six. I remember that. <laughs> um, outside, okay. So I know I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna point people towards your YouTube account, and you Darling just Pet post, Monkey's the new one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just posted Darling Pet Monkey, which is the newest video on the account. Everyone should watch it. It's great. Thank you. Um, is there anywhere else you want me to point people you'd like to plug right now? Thank you. Um, so you can go, yeah, if you go to Dump Mike, you can get the channel and then, um, man, you know, you can see the other stuff. Uh, I guess if I had to pick my favorite ones that I'm most proud of, uh, a good place to start would be, um, you know, Manicorn, Tiny Clones. Uh, I think the audio one, Banana, is fun. Uh, music video I did with um, Rabbits and uh, tigers and sharks. Um, I don't know. They're all kind of silly and fun. I mean, whatever. I mean, they're they're out there. They might not be for everybody, but I think if you like a couple, uh, you know, go if to. If you the like next the vibe, they're... I think they're. Yeah. yeah, and then if you don't like the vibe, just you know, go to another channel because it's it's it's, it's not going to get much different. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna I'm saying send people. It's Friday night films, right? Like that's what we're. Yeah, but it's probably harder to find it that way. I if you, the best easiest way to find, I honestly feel like is either. I have a feeling you probably typing in search. manicorn, right? That would be the old way I'd say because it's on the top. But I actually think I realized if you search dialing pet monkey, it's the, it's the top one on there. Luckily, I don't know how that worked out. But so yeah, everyone so listening, search darling pet monkey on YouTube. If you're not willing to look at this uh, main post, got 306 views, by the way. And it was all me. No, it's got 304. They don't allow, they don't do that anymore. You didn't even hit 306 yet. So get him to uh, 306. Help me get a 306. Michael. So at least I can get to the old days where it was like, <laughs> I get 306 myself. I haven't even gotten to the old days of what I could get myself. Come on. I'm going to, so this is, this episode is going up. Uh, the next release date is actually the 27th because I'm on a schedule. So we're recording this a bit nice. early. So everyone listening, if that, this video better be over 306. 
after it, I post this episode, okay? It probably won't, but yeah. No, no, I think I better be a, my prediction will be three three eleven. Uh, Michael and Sophia yeah. are pretty big. If it was <laughs> if it was just myself, I'd be at thirty thirty six still. Well, hey, you know, one day, one day, Jim, I believe this video can get to four hundred views. I really do. I, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And then you can just you can retire. You're done, right? That's well that's what four hundred views. The big money, the big ads come yeah. in. Uh, but in all seriousness, thank you so much for doing this. I'm so happy that you asked to do this because you're this on my list. Blast. So this I didn't have I didn't have to message you. You got to, you asked me. I was excited. Thank you, man. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your stuff. I've always been enjoyed our uh, conversations, and I've been looking forward to being on and having and uh, seeing your stuff for sure. Oh yeah, I will send you some dumb stuff that I've. I can't wait. That's my specialty. All right, man. Uh, it was good talking. See you awesome, later. Bob. Thanks again, man. Looking forward to meeting in person. <laughs>